Hello, welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have horror host, uh, horror host legend, uh, yeah. the man behind the Monster Channel, Halloween Jack himself. Halloween. Hey. <laughs> well, kind of Halloween Jack, not not Jack right now, but yeah, o- always Jack in here. Yep. Know, always. Hey, th- uh, thank you, man, for uh, for tapping me to do this uh i've been watching your videos and i, I love them and uh I'm, I'm flattered really flattered you you, you asked me yeah it, it's it's um you are uh, right now it's like everybody's operating on this level and you're you're just this level above oh, and <laughs> uh, uh, but you know i found you i don't know like 10 years ago maybe maybe 11 years ago, I believe um, you were at horror hound one year and I went into the room with all the horror hosts that they had there that year. And mm-hmm. I found, and then, so I started trying to find all these other horror hosts. I found you. And then I found you that, that you had the monster channel and, and, and I watched the monster channel. And then uh, one day I went to go watch it and it wasn't there on my Roku no more. So I have to watch it on my computer. Yeah. Now, so Please, I know that's a that's an ongoing battle that, that that's been, um, you know what? Unfortunately, money talks. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to, if if you have that kind of money to pay for it, I w- I would love it to look, uh, like something like Shutter. I mean, mm-hmm. I, and you know, uh, I I don't ever see any of this stuff as competition. I love Shutter. I love mm-hmm. Tubi. Tubi's great, man. Oh, Tubi's, Tubi's got some awesome. really cool stuff on it. Um, and and you know, we we've aspired. I've, I've gotten the channel to look like what I wanted it to look like. I mean, we've been at it for, for gosh, 12 years. Um, matter of fact, uh, March of next year is going to be the 13th anniversary, and we're planning some some big stuff to do before then. But, I mean, I finally have gotten this channel to look like what I've wanted it to, which was, like I said, something we watched as kids, whether it was a, a channel in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, with all the retro commercials and everything. Um and and uh, we'd like to spread it and share it as much as possible, but it's just getting to that point now where um, uh, technology um, is giving us all this these venues to do it. Oh yeah, but uh, you know, uh, money yeah. <laughs> money's the big issue. I mean, you know, we're we're nonprofit, and you know, we don't get anything for what we're doing here uh, at all. So we are thinking of Patreon because a lot of people are turning to that now. So, um, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I've decided as of a uh, couple weeks back, I decided I'm going to start a Patreon because I, I do it like you. I do it 100%. I don't make a penny, but I I'm, uh, I got invited to my first con, and I'm like, well, now i got to come up with money to go pay for the, going to the con. <laughs> which which uh, uh, Haunted which Screens movie? Expo in Hampton Beach, Virginia. Oh wow! Yeah, well, that's not too far from me, actually. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's the biggest thing. I would love to go to all these conventions, but um, you know, I'm yeah, not going to say anything. But gas prices and uh, you know, uh, even renting a car or anything right now. I mean, it's making it next to impossible. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of good shows. Matter of fact, I'd love to get to uh, Horror Hound. We get you know one coming up in September. Yeah, and. Um, Matter of fact, I don't know if you 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 heard about it. I think they're they're pushing it all over the place about hack and slash. Yep. And that big wrestling thing going on oh, yeah. uh, again. That, that's not too far for me. I, I'd like to just I'd like to just show up and rush the ring. You See, know, I, really- I, I, <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a drive. It's like five hours for me, but I got family that lives down by there, so it's not like oh, I, wow. I, I can go. Okay, well, I can just go visit my uncle that lives like fifteen minutes away. <laughs> Well, and, you never know. Yeah, it's, just my, it's about four hours for me. So I mean, you never, you never know. It yeah. just might show up and 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 kick the, both their asses. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. I started this. I'm going to. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the old man. Well, let me tell you, brother. <laughs> uh, and, uh, oh, well, the funny part about it is, is that um, I have friends that that are wrestlers. And I have a friend that has a wrestling organization here locally. And oh, wow. uh, one of my good friends, he keeps trying, he's been con- trying to con me in for like the last 10 years to get in the ring. And I'm like, 
dude, I'm I, at this point, I'm 48. I was like, I do not want to get in the ring at 48. I was like, don't get me wrong. I go to the gym all the time. I got good cardio. I'm fit. But man, when my body gets hurt, it takes forever. <laughs> I, uh, and that's the problem because mm-hmm. um, there was a group of guys uh, that I actually had. It, it was weird. It's just how everything just connects together because I was doing um, when I was still doing my show. Mm-hmm. Uh, on cable vision they were doing a bar- backyard wrestling show and you know how uh wrestling frowns upon that yep. so i popped in their tape and i was watching their show and i said well you know what these guys aren't like a lot of the backyard things i saw before where they're just trying to hurt each other mm-hmm. they actually had characters they actually were doing vignettes and stuff like that so i kind of hooked up with them helped train them and they actually have their own federation now, and they're doing really well in New Jersey. Uh, I mean, they've got a lot of big names connected with them now. But I went back two years ago to do some in-ring stuff with them, and I'm telling you, it took me about three to four days to recover after that. You think in, you think in your 40s? Wait till you get in your 60s. And God bless Ric Flair and all of them, you know, that they, they can still do that. But, I mean, I wouldn't did it, and I was like, oh, man, was I hurt. I mean, just like one or two days after, I was like, "Damn, what the hell happened?" <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it's it but is. But it was fun. It was a blast. Oh man, I, 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 if you can do it, I would recommend it. I I, I want to kind of do something like um, maybe do a. I, I was going to do like run-ins one time, and then that kind of got sidetracked. But I don't know. <laughs> it, I I screwed up my shoulder, geez, like three weeks ago. And, oh man. Uh, I kept working out because I'd be like, one day it would hurt. And then I'd go to the gym. That would feel good. Then the next day I'd be like, oh, I can't move my arm. It's hurt. I couldn't <laughs> sleep. I, I'd wake me up every five minutes because I'd roll over on it. Uh huh. And then oh, finally man, my wife's I like, done that too long ago. She's Damn. Like, yeah, she sounded like two old men. Jeez, what the hell? <laughs> my wife looked at me. She goes, Stop exercising your arm. Just yeah. go to the gym. If you got to go to the gym, do cardio, do legs, you're fine. So I did that for, I'm still doing that right now. And I'm just now getting where I can do weights again. And it's still like, ah. Oh, it's good, man. That's cool. <laughs> well, you never know. Like I said, maybe we'll show up in Knoxville and teach them both. You know, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really looking forward to that. That's, that's really cool. I, yeah. I, I love what they're doing. And man, the insults are flying. Oh, man. I, I've, I've gotten to talk to, to Hack. Uh, sl- uh, Slash is coming up hopefully this week. Oh, so, cool. So uh, hopefully sometime in the next few days, I'll have him on. And it's, it seems like every time we've had a, a planned uh, meeting, something happened and it, it kind of fell through, but that's life. So I'm yeah, that, that's, that's the world of horror hosting. Oh, wow. you. Trying to get anybody to do anything. You know, like everybody says, it's like wrangling cats, but <laughs> I, w- I would but, go one step and say, it's probably like wrangling squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, if you got hack and slash, or you 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 know you're doing okay. Oh man, and and, and I, I've I talked to Slash on, online. I talked to Hack here and there, and and a good bunch of guys. There's, there's oh, absolutely, so much fun. You uh, know, I always I always make this this analogy. Uh, I, I was involved in a lot of organizations in my lifetime. I mean, I was actually like a deacon in my church. I was uh, vice president of the PTA. For like 10 years and I was in wrestling and then I'm in horror and I'm telling you the best people to deal with were in horror and wrestling and the worst was at church and the PTA I'm telling <laughs> I, I can see that uh <laughs> now the, the guys I mean people in horror there there's just something about them I mean it, it, it's like I've always said they're so focused and passionate about this and that's that's a good thing to have oh, is yeah. to have a focus and yeah, great people. Absolutely great people. All the horror hosts, great people. Most of them. Most. I, I got I got lucky in my life. Um, I got to meet my local horror host uh, that I grew up with, which was Doctor Creep. Um, oh, man, I, Barry. I, I, I was friends with with Andy Cop because th- this is how I'm going to go. I lived in Tip City, not far from where I live now. Um, I'm sitting there watching TV one night. And shock theaters on. I'm like, oh, 
Wow. The computer's back on. And I, so I watched it. And then after the end of that episode, it goes, do you want to have your own show on public access? And I'm like, I think I do. <laughs> and, and and I, I went down the street because it was two blocks. The TV station was two blocks away from my house. I walked in uh, and there was Andy Cop, and me and him started talking. And he's like, if you want to do a show, do it. And I created group therapy then. And it was a public access show then. And then um, I would go in there. And I remember the one night I went in there and to go do work on my show. So I was going in to edit. And I hear the ha oh, oh, ha, and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and I end up sitting there. I didn't yeah. do anything on my show. All I did was listen to him tell stories like for hours. And I'm like, so I got lucky enough to be like the guy I grew up liking. I met him, and you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we were friends. We, I, we were acquaintances. We met each other a few times, but you know, it was, it was so cool. And then. Through those guys, I've met like Matt Brassfield, and then I've met Baron von Porkchop and A. Gasly Gould, oh, wow. and it just kept going further. And then I started meeting the further out, further out, further out. And then it's like, okay, I've met people as far out as uh, Las Vegas, uh, down into Virginia, North Carolina, a lot of Pennsylvania, Indiana, a lot of Indiana, a lot of Ohio. <laughs> wow. So. I'll tell you, that's a great feeling to meet those guys. I mean, I got to be friends with, with you know, Barry, Dr. Creep, uh, mm -hmm. hung out with him at several conventions, and what a sweetheart of a guy he was. And um, he went to uh, one of the first or second horror hounds, but he was hospitalized. Like, he was there for on Friday night, but then he was starting to have problems. So um, he called me after that weekend, and I, I had been planning on – doing a comeback with my show at the time. Mm -hmm. And it, and I believe he was in a, 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 like, not a nursing home, but some a, a facility like that at that point. Yeah. And he called me up, and I'll tell you what, he was gushing. He was so excited about Horror Hound. He was so excited about all the new horror hosts he met. I mean, I, I, that's what I have to say. I mean, I've gotten to meet a lot of these people, and I've been really blessed, I mean, to, to meet um, Stella from, you know, Philadelphia. I got to meet Zachary. I got to meet, uh, Dr. Creep, um, Fritz, the night owl. I mean, I've hung out with him, worked with him. And I'll tell you what, they, they, these guys, they're such class acts. They, they're so magnanimous with their time and they're so grateful that people remember them. But I'm telling you, Barry was, was so excited. Um, and it was unfortunate because he, he, passed away soon after that i mean he kept saying oh i want to film something for your show and you know and it it, it never happened and that's one thing that i always say to, to the horror host if you have an idea and you want to do something don't wait yeah jump on it that, jump on it now because you never know what's going to happen i mean I, it's unfortunate i've lost a lot of horror host friends over the past 10 years um and people that now i look back on i regret that wow i never did anything with them so that that's, you know, aside from when people come up and ask me about, you know, how to become a horror host, I would say don't, you know, that's my, my thing, kidding around yeah. uh, and tell them, well, look, you, you, you're not going to be doing this for money. So no. if you have the passion to do it, go ahead and do it. But I mean, my big advice is, you know, you have an idea, do it. You, you never know. You never know. And Barry was so cool. He was, oh, again, big, big bear of a guy. Oh yeah, sweetheart with it with a heart just as big. All the charity work he did and everything. Yep. And again, uh, I'm happy you got to, to meet him and hang out with him. I mean, I feel very fortunate. I did too. Yeah. And it's funny that you're saying that. I mean, because it, that's what always happens. It's like um, like the American Scary documentary. I was there filming my part when uh, Joe Bob Briggs and Zachary were there, and it's like it's like I didn't even want to do my own thing just sitting there and listening to these guys and the stories they had to tell, especially Zachary. I mean, another guy that I, that, that another person I got to, to meet and uh, semi call friend, you know, mm -hmm. and he was, he was such a great guy, such a great guy. Yeah. I, I was uh, going through some old albums I got off a guy and I legitimately have a Zachary 45. Oh, it's wow. Like, it's like dinner with Drac and dinner with Drac. <laughs> I can't remember what the other side is. And it's legitimately like it's 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 it was hanging on the wall at the shop, and uh, somebody goes, "Is that is that the the horror host guy?" I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "He 
made a record? I'm like, probably everybody made a record. Oh my gosh, he made yeah. several albums and oh, yeah. yeah, he did a ton of stuff. Oh man. He did a ton of stuff. I have to, I, I got to tell you, the, the coolest thing, um, I got to do a, a, an introduction video to introduce him when he was uh, inducted to the Hall of Fame because neither one of us could go to Horror Hound at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where it was going to take place. So uh, Count Gore and uh, um, Carlos Borloff. Another guy you should talk to. <laughs> I've, I've talked to Carlos. Yes. Oh man, another one. Don't talk to him. He talks. He's he's a hundred mile an hour from, from. Yes, he is. Yes. And 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 great guy. I mean, yep. another big hearted guy. Um, they they asked me. They said, "Well, we're going to go to Manhattan, and we're going to, you know, uh, hook up with Zachary. Do you want to come and do the introduction for his Hall of Fame?" I was like, "Oh my God, yeah, hell yeah!" So we went there, and it was the coolest thing because I I. I I know the guy's name, first name was Vincent. I'm, I don't remember his name, but he was the one that um, was working with Zachary a lot near near the end of his life. And, and he was, uh, you know, the one primarily that did the filming for Zachary. So we were going to his house because Zachary's studio where he he uh, filmed his, his things uh, was in this guy's house. So we go in and we're standing there. And the guy's like, okay, we're going to go down to the basement where the studio is. And we're all looking around like, well, where's the door? He goes over to his bookcase and pulls the bookcase open. And I was like, holy crap, that was the coolest thing. And you went down the basement and there was, you know, Zachary's. I don't know if you've seen some of the later things he did, like Horrible Horror and uh, where he's got that uh, uh, American werewolf in London figure. But I'm telling you, it was so amazing. To, I mean, First off, I'm like, damn, a suit, uh, you know, a bookcase that, you know, open. but just to be on that set with him. And uh, again, a guy that was so warming and welcoming to all of us and filming all this stuff. And again, very fortunate. I feel very fortunate that I've gotten to meet these guys, all of them. Yeah. Great people. Well, it, it's it's one of the things that that the reason I'm, I, I started doing a show was that I loved horror hosts when I was a kid. You know, I had Dr. Creep. Then as I got older, I kind of thought that it had disappeared. Mm -hmm. Then I found it, like I said, at Horror Hound that one year when I found all the horror hosts. I'm like, oh, man. And I bought some DVDs at the time. And then I started finding a bunch of a bunch, a bunch of uh, people on YouTube or on uh, uh, Facebook and, and Twitter and stuff like that. And then I started finding their YouTube pages. So I started watching that. And then at my at my comic shop, I started putting it on in the background some days when I'm just like, oh, wow. yeah. And um, it's funny because I have people come up and I have, you know, everybody from high school kids, you know, junior high kids up to, you know, 60, 70 year, old, year olds coming in. And um, some of them are like sitting there watching. There's like, what is this? I'm like, it's a horror host. <laughs> and they're like, what's a horror host? I'm like, well, sit down, children. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> And they'll sit there and they'll well, watch it. They'll get into it. And I'm like, that's the whole point. Uh, and that's cool. That is so cool. I mean, because I have gotten, uh, I've gotten emails from younger people too. It, it's like they've found this, this wonderful magical thing all of a sudden that they never knew about before existed. And 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 it is. It's so cool to sit there and watch them react to it. And I mean, I get I get emails from all over the world from people and young and old. I mean. Uh, and, I, and I've said this before. I mean, I got a letter from a guy in Liechtenstein um, and he was he was blown away when he found Monster Channel because he said they have one cable channel in Liechtenstein. And it's like, you know, very generic, I suppose. And he said they have nothing like this on TV. So, uh, you know, him finding YouTube and finding the Monster Channel and finding all this other stuff, he was he was like gushing over it over and over again. And then that, that makes me happy because that's what. That to me is what I'm doing. That's what it's all about. Is I, I've been doing this for twenty something years, just pushing this out there to everybody to let everybody see how great and what a great form of entertainment this was, and a, and a great form of escapism too. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, the with, with the horror host cutting up and the and the you know the movies and you know, I've always said the crappier the movie, the better for us. You know, because then you know you really don't want to mess with something good. Like when I hosted Night of Living Dead, that's my absolutely favorite movie. And I didn't want to do anything 
to mess it up. So, you know, anything that had that or something with Boris Karloff in, I, I kind of didn't want to do that. But, oh, man, you take something like the Killer Shrews and you just can destroy it, you know, and it's oh. it's funny, you know. So, oh yeah, those are the best films. It, those are the best ones. Well, was it last year, I believe? Last, last year. I went through and I watched... I don't know, 10 horror hosts in like three days. So this is like, uh, well, since I'm off there. So Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So I watched all the different horror hosts doing their version of Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> 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 and everybody's like, didn't we just watch Night of the Living Dead? I was like, yeah, but not this version. It's not this one. Yeah, I, not I, well, this one. And that's what I tell people because sometimes, you know, because the scheduling with the, the channel, um, you know, sometimes it'll hit me that I want to do a Vincent Price night or something like that. But then I might have already shown somebody hosting House on a Haunted Hill the week before. But, but then I'll play it again. And people will be like, well, didn't you just say? Yeah, but you don't understand. Every host has their own take on it. Yep. Sometimes it's like watching a whole totally different movie. The way okay. some of the horror hosts uh, uh, do it, whether it's with their bits, whether it's their... Um, their their drop-ins you know like people making fun of it or whatever even if they don't mess with the film just their take on it it's it's uh, i mean damn i should do what you did i mean that's my favorite movie i should i should pull out and i've got gosh i probably have every horror host under the sun host in that movie yeah so i, I, like I, said, I, I think i think i watched 10 over three days <laughs> and it, it, it was you know because like i i love night living dead i i oh gosh legitimately it's 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 one of my go-to movies mm -hmm. i watch it two or three times a year oh yeah um, and almost every time i watch it because i just watched the one when joe bob ran it recently and it was the cleaned up super you know clean version of it and you're watching it and you're like oh wow you can see little things from uh -huh. you know <laughs> and i'm like because you know it's 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 what the Criterion version of it I think is what the ones that they aired, and I'm like wow because my old DVD copy isn't that crisp and clear of course because that's probably what thirteenth fourteenth generation or something stupid. Well, I just did a top twenty DVD thing with where old Mad Blood and of mm -hmm. course Night Only Dead was my number one and that's what I was saying on that that was the very first VHS tape I ever had owned. <laughs> And when you saw these later DVDs coming out, you're right. It was like watching a whole totally different movie. Because like I said, there was a scene where Ben had the, you know, one of the zombies on the ground and he's, you know, hitting him with the, with the um, crowbar and the other zombie comes up behind him. Now, on my original tape, it was so dark. You didn't see the zombie until you saw his hand come into view on his shoulder. Yep. When I got one of the better DVDs later on, you could see that zombie coming from a mile away. And I was like, oh, my God, this is like watching a whole totally different. I never saw that before. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen the 4K. I mean, some of the 4K stuff they have out now and, and uh, some of the Blu-rays of some of these films, uh, I can't believe how good they look. I mean, uh, you know, when we were hosting, gosh, when a bunch of us started hosting like back in uh, 99, 2000, you know, like that. I mean, the copies of the movies we had back then were terrible. Even ones, even store bought ones. I mean, a lot of us relied on, you know, bootleg copies that you got from conventions and stuff like that. But I mean, even some of the DVDs that you had gotten of these old movies were crappy looking, you know, even on DVD. But now, oh my gosh, I, I can't get over how good everything looks. Yeah. It almost looks too good. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. I, I had this discussion the other day. <laughs> T tell me what you think. I have actually backtracked one full generation. So I've gotten away from watching my Godzilla movies in uh, Blu-ray and better. I've gone back to uh, DVD because when you get that super crisp and clear versions of their giant monsters, you see every, you see the strings hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. Everything just, it's like, oh, yeah. And and the zippers and yep. the yeah yeah so so yeah I, I know it kind of kills the magic yeah like I said it kind of it, you know you're better off watching the old crappy versions that you know we grew up in I mean even even the ones on television weren't that great because I, I remember the Indestructible Man mm -hmm. 
with Lon Chaney. And there was a scene where um, he comes up to the, this man and woman who had a flat tire and he helps him change the tire. And it's really weird. Every version of that I had ever seen on TV, when it comes up to that part, it kind of was like it had a laggy thing going on to it. Like it kind of kept repeating. And it, and it only happened for like two or three minutes. But then when I got a good DVD version of it and it didn't have that, it was like almost weird watching it because it's like owning a record that has a skip in it. You were so used to hearing that skip that when you got a CD and it didn't skip, it was like kind of weird, you know, and that's what I feel about the indestructible man. I mean, growing up for so many years, I saw that part and it was skipping, you know, like lagging, lagging. And then I saw it later on on DVD and I missed that. It was like, it was so weird. It was like, Really weird watching this normally, you know. Well, I had this discussion a while back that the, the one thing I I really miss because I, I love going to the movies. I love going to the theater. I like sitting yeah. in, the, in the thing. I I miss the hum of the projector. That boom. yes, yeah. There's something about that, and I, it's gone now. And uh, because everything's digital, yeah, I mean, that I, was kind of. Um, I went to see. Um, Gosh, this shows you how often I don't go to the movies anymore. I, I think the last uh, thing I had seen was uh, uh, Kong, the Skull Island, the newer yeah. one. Mm -hmm. That's the last one I went to see. And it was the same thing. It was like I'm looking over where the projector is, and it's not like a projector. It's like all digital. And to me, it wasn't the same thing. It's not, you know, it's not the same experience. And like I said, shelling out is that much money to go see one movie. I mean, I, I'm a big double feature. Always have been a big double, triple feature fan. Always love to see kind of weird how they pair up certain things. And, you know, and um, I, 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 I miss that. Like you said, the hum of the camera, the, uh, the triple features. And like I said, dating myself because, you know, my parents would give me a buck. And I could go to the movies and buy popcorn. and you know, jujubes and a soda and pay for the movie for and now. watch three movies. Like one of the coolest ones I ever remember was when the last Planet of the Apes movie came out, the Conquest for Planet of the Apes or Battle, whichever one was the last one. And they had this thing at a theater near me. It was called Go Ape for a Day. And it started at 10 o'clock in the morning and they showed every single Planet of the Apes movie back to back to back, all five of them. Mm -hmm. And I was in that freaking theater all day watching that and i i don't know i mean there are there are cultists who uh, you know uh when i say cultists i mean you know um fans you yeah. know driving fans who do that kind of thing now the drive-ins you know they might have dust the dawn shows but man th those were the days i mean i sound like my father i sound like an old fart but i'm telling you. i i understand where he where he was coming from now when he used to say well back when i was a kid you know Oh, yeah. This is I, I miss all that so much. Well, that's like my my uh, my 22 year old son. He's him and I go to the movies a lot. Um, and that's that's our one of our things. It's, both of us love movies. And uh, I go pick him up at his house and I'm like, all right, let's go to the movies. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I belong to like the club. So I get the discounted tickets and stuff like that. And uh me and me and him make fun of the fact is do you remember when movie pass came out a few years ago where you could uh, oh yeah movies for 10 bucks a month i was like uh -huh. i know like there's four me my buddy uh dave henrik and and my buddy mark we legitimately the four of us put that out of business because <laughs> we went to the movies every <laughs> uh my wife would be getting ready to go to work so she'd be going to bed at night and i'd be calling my buddy mark up and i'd be like hey what are you doing? Nothing. There's a movie. You want to go see it? Sure, let's go. So we <laughs> the at like 10 o'clock at night because there was nothing else to go. Um, I'll tell you what I almost put out of business was the popcorn concession. Because the place I went to did that thing where you can get a refill for free. Mm -hmm. And they probably figured, you know, they probably figure, oh, you get a big bucket like that. You're, you're, you might refill it once. You're not going to do No, I would do it like three or four times. I'd be like going back, going back. You're back again? Yeah, here. Yeah, fill it up. Fill it up. And then I fill it up when I was leaving, you yep. know, to take home. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, that, I, that, I, that, that's cool. So uh, you were saying 20, I mean, not that I want to interview you, but which is cool. But you said your 22-year-old son, I mean, is his go-to horror too, or is he? Um, recently, he's really gotten into horror. Um, he was never a horror kid. Um, I never, 
you know, really kind of pushed anything on him or stuff. He just kind of fell yeah. into it. But uh, he's also super analytical, so he just analyzes everything. And uh, oh. it's neat because, like, he gets into stuff like, uh, you know, the the, the Russian uh, sci-fi movie Stalker. He likes that. Uh, oh, wow. He, um, he, I, uh, he ran uh, – we did a horror – fest thing at our at our shop one night so around halloween we would when this one side would shut down we would rearrange the other side i'd bring in my projector put in the movies and we'd, we'd show movies up on the wall and cool. um yeah. one one time i was running it and my wife's like hey she's vince isn't feeling good so i had to run back to my house I'm like joe you're in charge and i was like here's the movies this is what we're playing and then i come back at the end of the night and everybody's like why did you do that to us? Because it was um, the Beyond. Uh, it was a local <laughs> movie called uh, "Kill That Bitch." It was a werewolf movie. Um, Society and Cannibal Holocaust it was the four movies. Oh my god! Oh my god! And they're like, yeah, there was, yeah. What were you trying to do to them? Jeez! They were like, there was no palate cleanser. Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, you should at least put a cartoon in the middle of all that or something. You know. Uh, <laughs> um, Oh my gosh! Society and Cannibal Holocaust back to back. Yep, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing this year. I think I'm going to do it again this year, but I'm gonna. I think I might do like, uh, um, like the Forgotten Slashers this time. So like uh, the Prowler. Uh, oh, the Prowler. You want to stuff like what that? What is that one? Uh, the the um, yeah, Humongous would be good. Grim Reaper. That's yeah. another one, man. That that's that's pretty good movie. Um, what the heck would be another the, the mutilator guy? Yep. I remember going to see that in the movies. There's <laughs> not what ex, not what you expect for a movie called the mutilator. I mean, it? because it originally was supposed to be called Spring Break or something like that, or I, I don't know. They changed it, and it, that's my thing too about them changing changing the names that, to make it. Hey, I mean, if you want a suggestion, well, I don't. It's not a slasher movie, but if, if you ever do a zombie thing, which I, I know a lot of you know people are probably sick of zombies but there are i mean some good obscure ones out there let let sleeping corpses lie yeah. that's like one of my favorite zombie films that that'd be a good one to throw in it, i mean if you ever do anything like that yeah we're, we're 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 trying to figure it out because i got i got a ton, <laughs> ton going on because i'm I, I i am not a person who gives himself any free time <laughs> oh uh, please <laughs> i knew you've heard the old saying i think you have about yeah. how I work on the Monster Channel, you know, like what what is it that the Bone Jangler always says? Uh, uh, Twenty seven eight, you know, instead of twenty four seven. I'm working on a twenty seven eight, and you know, twenty three hours a day. You know, that he's not far off, but um, you know, like you said, it's a passion. So. Oh yeah, it, it it totally is. It's it's um, and and it's funny because I've talked to all these horror hosts and stuff, and everybody does it for the fun of it. And it's because everybody's like, if you're doing this for money, don't do it because you're oh, never going to make any money. They're like, sure, you might make a few dollars, whatever, but, you know, it all goes right back into something else. And mm -hmm. and it's I, I, I always have, you know, because I, I joke around that I created a character. I had my whole uh, horror host gimmick all worked out. And then I really started studying other horror hosts. I was like, wow, I'm not going to be that good. So no, you never know. So I, mean, I, I did the Saturday morning route. So I do, I do sci Fridays and I do Saturday morning serials. And uh, oh, yeah, I was, I was watching some of that. That's cool, man. It's, I love it. I mean, you know, if that's what you, you found, what was your horror host gonna, name going to be? I mean, uh, if you don't mind me asking. Oh, no, it's, it's uh, Dr. Edgar Shelley Lovecraft, PhD, not MD. <laughs> <laughs> and uh wow it, it, See, that's it, cool you should have went with it <laughs> he, he may get dusted off this year uh um, oh, you got it man why not uh, you know and i'm telling you i don't encourage a lot of people to do this so i'm telling you i think you should do it so the, take uh, me take me at my word man here you know? i will i got i got the baron <laughs> the baron wants me to uh me and him have talked about doing something together and and uh oh that'd be good and uh See, that, that, that's that's what i love like i said uh i i love what i love about the horror host community right now um and like i said i've been involved in it for 23 years and i mean yeah i'm not going to name any names 
but there are hosts who just didn't want to work with anybody else and, and hosts who frowned. I mean, I can understand it that some of the hosts that were on, you know, legitimate TV at the time when they started pe- seeing people do it on the Internet, mm-hmm. they frowned upon it. But now they don't. I mean, you can't you can't. I mean, because that's, you know, whatever. What's going on? That cat doing something. The cat knocked, uh, <laughs> oh, knocked one of my kids' books off the top of my comment box over there. <laughs> All right. He's like, pay attention to me. She's like, yep, yep. I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it's funny. It's how it's come around to now internet horror hosts are legitimate. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and, and they've always have been, but they weren't accepted by a lot of the hosts. And I, I think one of the, the, the greatest things I, I see going on now is everybody working together. I would love to see you and, and Pork Chop get together and do something. I love horror host team ups. Yeah. I, I, I love them. It, it's like, you know, being a comic book fan, my favorite comic book was The Brave and the Bold because of the team ups. Yep. You know, I, I you know, seeing some of the, 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 um, seeing, you know, some of the mixtures of, of certain heroes like the Creeper and the Atom, yep. so, you know. I love that stuff. And that oh, yeah. carried over to me with the horror host. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people are doing it now. And, and I mean, Slash works with a lot of people, Octavian Hollow. I mean, he, I don't know if you saw that, his Halloween special he did two years ago. He had like everybody on it. Yeah. Like I, all of us. Yeah. I got to, I got to get to watching that one. I, I heard about it recently and now I've got to watch. Well, it. I play all those at Halloween. So I, I check out the schedule. I'll send you the schedule. I'll let you know when it's on. Cool. It, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And that's what I love about all these guys. It, all the uh, all the newer guys, Vincent Grimley, Mr. Molto, uh, Octavian, Slash, um, Bobby the Bat is another guy, you know, uh, well, it's a puppet, but uh, <laughs> he's he's uh, a, a good horror host, too. It, it's And he does a Saturday morning thing. That's what I'm saying. I like your Saturday morning thing, too. It's like I might tap you to put that on the channel one of these days if you're you're up for that. You know. I would love to do it. Whether <laughs> the, the only problem is, is that I, I the the cartoons that I air on there, I don't know what will happen at that point because I risk it. I don't. It's one of the ones where if they shut me down, they take it down. They take it down. But most of the cartoons, well, cartoons they they kind you of. Don't, like, if you don't think I haven't dealt with that in thirteen years, <laughs> yeah. So believe me, there's we we will figure it out. Okay. Cool. Cool. But yeah. I, again, it. it it, it's just great to see all these guys working together and to me the more the merrier you know the more i can my problem right now with the channel is i got so many people that are horror hosts now and it's really difficult for me to i always like to keep the horror hosts um prime time mm-hmm. or um you know what I, I i have them on when the channel you know kind of the the schedule resets at, at noon so mm-hmm. i have a couple of horror hosts on at noon um but prime time is for the hosts, and I'm telling you, my biggest problem right now is finding spots for everybody because there's so many good people out there, and so many uh, just ones that are just starting out too. I mean, Princeton Vice, I, I like his show. He's he's new. Um, uh, Dario Dario Evil is another guy you got to look up. He's on YouTube. Uh, I haven't had him. I've had him on the channel a couple times, and I'll tell you what, he's got a great, great. I mean, my thing with hosts, and I always tell him, be unique, be unique different makeup i'm always, why do you think my face is yellow and i wear a red wig because nobody else does that you know and speaking of comic books i got that from the creeper so um <laughs> but i'm saying i always tell these guys unique look and unique name and i mean you know horror hosting is horror hosting whatever your yeah. style is you know but it, it the unique looks and everything. And, and these guys, I mean, they have that again, uh, you know, I'm naming off rattling off all these names and you look at them and they're all unique guys, you know, where back in the day it was just, you know, most people were white faced with black around their you know, eyes and, you know, which was cool too. Yeah. yeah. Cause it, it fit the era and, and that there is a huge market out there for horror hosts because, you yeah. know, like I said, with YouTube and with the internet, and uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to say I think sometimes, you know, because people this is not meant to be in any way, shape or form pointed to anybody in directly or anything. But, yeah, I know that there are people who like, well, the Internet is different than the TV channel. You know, 
if you're on legitimate TV, even if you're on public access, if you're a little bit more legitimate than internet, because everybody can do internet. I'm like, but everybody can do public access if you can get to the TV station that will let you put yeah. it on. Um, you know, because I've done it. I've been a public access guy. Um, and I loved it. I had a blast. That's why this exists, because this is the, the gradual outcome of what public access was. And that's what I've became where I'm at now. Um, and I think, why would you not, you know, okay, your TV station has X amount of range. The internet is worldwide. I, I have, yeah. yeah, yeah, I have fans from Norway and Britain, mm -hmm. and, you know, Scotland. I have fans in Mexico, Canada, and I'm, I'm sitting there because I, I, I don't even think about it sometimes. Like I, I do my morning thing i'm like good morning it's 8 a.m you know it's time for saturday morning and everybody's like well, we're dude this is like noon or this is you know <laughs> mid-afternoon for us i'm like okay where are you at now i have to put noon eastern standard time and I put that at the end of my oh yeah i had i've had to do the same thing but it's weird because you know we've had i mean some of the the uh, our biggest views come from you know other than the united states australia england Canada lately has been like really a big number with us. Um, and th I, you, you made the exact point that I've always been saying, look at, it's great to say you're on legitimate TV, but your, your viewership is so limited where, gosh, we have, uh, when we have our primetime lineups, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, it's nothing for us to have 114, 115 countries watching. Now it might only be one person in that country, but yeah. it amazes me to look down that list and I'm seeing, you know, China, Saudi Arabia. And, and then I look at the time that we're on and I look at the time that it is there. And I'm like, dude, are these guys staying up until five o'clock in the morning to watch our channel? I mean, there's no other explanation to me that either they're just up and they're bored. I don't know. Or, you know, they're like, oh, wow. You know, they'll say something like, wow, the bone jangler's on at five in the morning. I'm going to stay up and watch that or something. I, you know, the only thing that gets me about it is I really don't hear from a lot of them. Uh, I, occasionally, like I said, I'll get an email from another country. And um, Australia has been really big. I mean, that's how Raul Madblood found us. I mean, that's where he's from. Um, but I would love to hear from some of these other people. You know, like I said, China. They, there's a couple people in China watching. Like the other night, there was two. And like I said, there's not enough, but dude, it's China. Yeah. And I'd like to know what they think. Like, unless you speak the language, you see this weirdo, you know, on the TV. <laughs> I'm like, what, is, what are you thinking? Like, what, what, what is impressing you about this? Or is it not impressing you? Or are you just watching it because it's so strange? You know, that's, uh, I'd love to hear from people. Well, I, I but, had somebody send me a message one day and they're like, can you put it in subtitles in Hindi? And I went, I don't know if I can put wow. subtitles on my show. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. I was like, maybe, I guess. Well, I I yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Maybe you can check uh -huh. YouTube. Is that, is that an option at the bottom somewhere that I haven't seen? <laughs> so I don't know. That makes me wonder too. If, if, uh, you know, I mean, you can do closed captioning on YouTube. So it makes yeah. me wonder. If they could do that on YouTube, it makes me wonder if they can do it on my channel. If they'd write me, tell me, you know, that's like I said, it's like all these countries watching. And I'm like, I've heard from very few of them. I would love to hear more from them. But I, I know, I mean, I guess the stuff, you know, it's this day and age where people send emails and stuff. Everything's text messaging. And, you know, I, I'm sorry. I'm an old fart when it comes to all this technology. And stuff. Well, I've noticed that that when people message me in my comments, it's usually just telling me, hey, you know, love the show, whatever, you know, I'll get the little, hey, can you find this cartoon or this? And I'm like, oh, see what I can do. But when I do live, when I go live on Friday night or when I go live on Saturday morning, um, sometimes I, I can't be there the entire time. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm there most of the time, you know, kind of hanging in the periphery sometime. But I'll have people in like, hey, you know, shout out where you at. And you just see the the list of, of where people are at. And it's like, you know, Hey, I'm in London. Hey, I'm in uh, Germany. Hey, I'm in Norway. Hey, I'm, and it's like, yeah, 
man, this is just amazing. And I even I messaged that one time. I was like, dude, the fact that you guys are watching me in a, a completely different and, and I get sometimes it's like people are on military bases or you know, yeah, yeah. or their 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 uh former Americans are now transplanted, you know, somewhere else. Um and, and it's funny because I have a guy um in England, I believe, and uh I always post it, I'm like, oh, you know. I know I do Saturday morning serials and yes, some of the cartoons I show are actually the ones that were on weekdays. And he's like, no, not here. They weren't, they were Saturday morning right. cartoons here in Britain. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well then there you go. It's a Saturday morning cartoon for you. Then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, um, I, I think one time there was like, uh, 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 it was a Saturday night and I, and I, you know, the, the analytics are different now. I used to use Google analytics and it was, we had to stop using it because um, one time they updated and knocked the channel off and it was off for like 24 hours because of that. And it took us a long time. to. Get, and, and I, and it was, I was sad to see it go because I'll tell you what, their analytics were, were great. I mean, I could see real time analytics. I could see where, but I remember one Saturday night, I mean, there was like 10 people watching from uh, where was it? Turkey or somewhere or Iraq. I can't remember. And I found out it was a military base and they were watching it from there. So, yeah, I think that has, has a lot to do with where they're watching from. But um, still, that's that's so damn cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Real, just to think that you're reaching out and reaching that far to people. And I'll tell you what, the shout outs. They're important. They're yeah. important to people. I mean, people love that. I mean, th think about it when we were kids. If you had any kind of show where you could send in a picture. And they would show you a picture, mm -hmm. you know, like um, Zombo, Zombo, who we have on Fridays at midnight now. Well, Friday, Saturday morning, midnight. Um, he does his thing on, you know, pictures on the wall, too. And um, I mean, that harkens back to when we were kids. I mean, sending a picture into a show. And if they say your name on TV, you're like, oh, crap, you know, <laughs> yeah. so that, that's important. Yeah, it's, it's, it's neat because I'll get a message and like, hey, man, I love your show. Can, can you do a shout out to my husband? I'm like. Sure. What's his name? And I'm like, yeah, I got no problem. I'm, I'm, I'm like, that's great, man. Yeah. That's great. I uh, I love that. Yeah, it, it's it's um, I don't I don't know. I've talked to some other horror hosts. They're like, you know, people will reach out and be like, really like, uh, you know, like like I'll send you a heartfelt letter. And I got one a while back, and I was like, I, I kind of felt like I don't know what to do. Well, you know, because I'm like, I'm just some silly guy doing a, a cartoon show out of his basement, you know, <laughs> and I, I I wrote him back and he goes, man, thank you for writing back to me. You don't know how much this means to me. And I'm like, dude, the fact that you're watching me means the world to me. Yes. And the fact yeah. that I'm affecting you to be able to watch your cartoons that you grow up on with your kids and your grand or your grandkids. Or, and I was like, that's awesome and i love being able to do that that's why i do it because i have a i have a, a passion for cartoons it's it's uh, saturday mornings and comic books are like my big thing and and uh being able to bring that to people and even horror movies like i do obscure horror movies at my shop just because people are like i never heard of this whoa gotta, yeah gotta watch this uh, <laughs> well and that's it opening that up to a new generation i mean mm -hmm. I, and i've said this a, a lot in interviews uh, Growing up, I think we had the appreciation of a lot of this older movies, older shows, because we watched the same things that our parents watched. Because mm -hmm. when you had, um, like where I was in New York, they had a, a police officer, Officer Joe Bolton, and he used to show Three Stooges. He used to show Little Rascals. You had this other guy who was a, a, a naval captain, Captain Jack McCarthy. Um, and, and he would show Laurel and Hardy. I mean, this was all the stuff that our parents mm -hmm. watched, all, uh, mind you, in the theaters. Yeah. But we grew up watching the same things our parents watched. And then my children, when they were younger, watched all that, too. And, and not that I made them watch it, but I'm just saying it, it, it was that appreciation of it, 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 me opening that up to my children. I mean, you're talking three generations there. And that's what I love about this. That's again, that's why I do this with the Monster Channel. That's why I love to see what you're doing mm -hmm. with the cartoons because you're opening this up to, and 
look at, I've said it before. Um, I mean, not every kid digs all the old stuff. No. You know, that's why they do these remakes upon remakes. This is somebody in Hollywood explained it to me. The reason they remake movies is to make the younger people want to see them because some younger kids might not want to see black and white. And, and hell, if you have a subtitled movie, forget that. They ain't, they ain't going to deal with that. But um, that's why they do this. And mm -hmm. my thing is, though, I mean, they're even remaking things, you know, that weren't that old, you know, like The Stepfather and, and, and When a Stranger Calls, which is cool. Like I said, I've said this before. I give credit to anybody who does anything, whether it's a movie, a TV show, a radio show, a YouTube channel, whatever. It, it, as long as you're creating that that that's fine by me but i don't know I, we need originality that's my thing we need originality oh yeah it's it's um me the whole thing is is that i'm i'm here having fun uh you know and i've i've got what was funny is i got i've got one hate message and <laughs> it was just one, one just <laughs> one before before i get too far back um how uh, did you have uh, the horror host that inspired you locally, or did you kind of just make? That's actually a dog. What you say? <laughs> hey, come here. You're going to interview me. You have a question? <laughs> no, he's just wandering around. What? He, he'll he's, be like, oh, he's great. Like, he's, yeah, I have a question. Who the heck are you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, believe it or not. Um, I didn't grow up with any horror hosts. I mean, it was, I lived in New Jersey at the time and there really wasn't um, anybody. I mean, we had Zachary and, but I was too young to see him. I saw him talking about cartoons. I saw him hosting Hercules cartoons when I was small. And I remember him doing that. And then um, he did this, uh, it was a local New Jersey channel where he did this uh, American bandstand type show called Disco Team. So I got to see him, but he, but I never saw him hosting until later on when I saw tapes and things like that. So other than that, there was a, um, a show on Saturday nights called Creature Feature. Uh, it was on NEW Channel 5 in New York. And that was a non-hosted show for a long time. And then all of a sudden they had this guy, The Creep. Mm -hmm. um, although it was a guy in a cheesy tuxedo, hair, sunglasses, and, and his name was Lou Steele. He was an executive in the uh at new and he used to do a lot of the voiceover work but um he did it but he only did it for a couple of years i mean i always joke about how horror hosting except if, except if you're in ohio vince Go ahead. turn it down that will be loud and i'll get it I will, turn it down turn it down turn it down no you either turn it down or you go upstairs and watch the tv you gotta turn it all the way down turn it to five Maybe seven? Okay, that's probably good. Sorry. <laughs> seven is good. YouTube be like, wow, you're watching Rough Ruffman, so you can't watch it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I've always joked that yeah. horror host years are like dog years. If you're a horror host and you're on for four years, that's like the equivalent of 20 years. Now, but that was with a lot of, not unless you're in Ohio. I mean, those guys in Ohio, they love their horror hosts to go oh, on yeah. forever. Yep. I mean, you're talking about Big Chuck and Little John. You're doing it for how many years? I mean, you know, um, yeah, same thing with, uh, uh, you know, Son of Ghoul and guys like that. They, they mm -hmm. love that. But I'm telling you, when it came to horror hosts in my area, gosh, they were only on for a couple of years. I mean, yeah. it's, it's hard to believe exactly when he was in Philly as Roland, only did it for like a year and a half or two years. He came to New York again, only did it for two years on ABC, then went to another local station. And um, yeah, I mean, I say that to Stella uh, from Philadelphia. I think she was on, gosh, six years. I said, wow, that's like 30 years and dog years. I mean, horror host years. years. You know, you, you consider yourself lucky. Yeah. But uh, no, I didn't really have anybody. And, and I've said this before. I think the thing that inspired me to be a horror host, I mean, uh, I watched Stella. I, I love her show. Um, was that Zombo episode of the Munsters when Louie and I played that. That's, that was my first exposure to what a horror host was. And I was like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> I want to do that. You know? <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it, that's like finding out recently. Cause like I said, I'm, I'm in Ohio, the land of horror hosts, even to this day. 
Um, I was talking to me, they're like, man, there's nobody in Florida. I went, what? There's got to be people in Florida. And I was like looking it up. I think there's like one, maybe two. I'm like, wow, maybe Ohio it is. But then I look at because because Ohio also has one of the highest per capita haunted houses that you can go to at Halloween. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, so I'm wondering <laughs> if there is some sort of correlation between the two. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, look at I don't know if you know um, Mr. Maniacal, Mike Maxim. He's uh, big in the haunt industry. Look him up. He's like, I, he's just like one of my best friends, and he's helped me put this channel. To every channel I've done in the past few years, it's been with his help, and he's been invaluable to me as far as that goes. But he's in the the haunt industry. Matter of fact, he's um, we're working out this deal. He's working with uh, guitarist Neil Zaza, mm-hmm. and they're going to do a. a and they've done live shows in Ohio. I think last year was a, a Nosferatu. Uh, based one it was called one dark night well he's going to do it again this year and um we're going to try and uh, like kind of simulcast it on the monster channel but uh yeah i mean that's how he became a horror host he's got a horror host persona mr maniacal and um that's because he was so big in the hunt and he's he's great at makeup he's absolutely fabulous at makeup and he put a horror host show together cool. and as far as florida i mean you're talking about past horror hosts or current uh past horror hosts People that that oh are, yeah well you had Chuck Armstrong was one he was he was again I'm I'm not sure how long he lasted um, Doctor Speculo I think was from Florida and you had somebody called Grave Master that was in Florida um, I, and I believe some of their stuff is on YouTube so if you get a chance look them up but uh, yeah. there's some current guys there Professor Gilman is the guy that oh yeah Gilman yeah 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 he's a cool guy no I've known him for a long time another great guy. Now, I've asked all the horror hosts this, so we're going to get to hard-hitting questions now. <laughs> all right. Money's no object. What movie are you putting on your show? Holy crap. Um, yeah, that's tough. That, that, that was as tough as me picking out my top 20 favorite DVDs. Um, wow. I have to say Frankenstein meets the wolf, man. I love that movie. I always wanted to host it. Either that or The Invisible Man. It's got to be Universal. I would love to get a Universal film to, to do. Because, I mean, that's one thing, uh, you know, when I do, you know, when we air, that I, you know, <laughs> you don't mess with Universal. You don't mess with Toho, nope. Hammer, any of that. I mean, you know, there's supposedly some PD Universal out there. But, um, yeah, it, it would be one of those. Either Frankenstein meets the Wolfman or the Invisible Man. One of those. Okay. All right. Next question. You can have anybody. Time and money is not an object. So this could be past, present, you know. So somebody that passed away, whatever. Who are you bringing on your show? Wow. Um, I would have to say Boris Carlo. I would love. Uh, I, I mean that that man, absolutely amazing, amazing, and 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 again, class act, class act. It was uh, you know always did things for the kids too. You know, like the Grinch and and mm-hmm. um, amongst other things. I mean, he did a lot of stuff for for children. Um, but he, um, uh, yeah, I, I it would be absolutely amazing to be in, just being in his presence. I mean, he he's. He's one of those actors that never begrudged what he did. No. Because it made him a living. Yep. I mean, Vincent Price was like that. I got to meet Vincent Price very briefly on a, a speaking tour. And uh, it was funny. I said this before. Somebody in the audience asked him, well, why do you do horror movies? And he goes, well, I would love to do Shakespeare. He goes, but I also love to eat. So, <laughs> you know, but Karloff never, uh, never, never begrudged what he did and there was so many so many of them that did so many yeah. didn't like being pigeonholed yet hey it made them living so yeah that's one thing about him he was uh, amazing oh yeah yeah that, hands down and that's down. like the uh the one that, that i was really kind of disappointed to find out relatively recently was the uh the girl that was in the movie popcorn she was in uh um stepfather she was in uh, oh um Oh, man, I oh gosh, I'm blanking. Yeah, you've drawn them. Um, and she did not like horror. 
I'm like, but you became like a horror. You were in a ton of good horror movies in a relatively short amount of time. And she didn't want nothing to do with it. I'm like, it's with that. Jennifer, who was her name? Jennifer. Was that Jennifer Connelly? Is that no, no. Name? Jennifer Connelly was, uh, no, not Jennifer Connelly. Um, gosh, <laughs> everybody's going to chastise me for this and not remembering her name. Um, yeah. And she did the curse too. She was in that one. The yeah. 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 Um, oh my God. Why can't I remember her name? Not Jennifer Connelly. That's the one from Labyrinth, isn't it? That's one. Yeah. Um, ouch. Uh, it's all right. I got Halloween Jacqueline over here is looking it up. Jill. Yeah, it's Jill. Oh, Jill Sholin. Sholin. Yeah. Sholin. yeah. Yes. yes. I didn't know, see. I never heard that of her. She. Yeah, I didn't find out until I was watching the uh, um, the stepfather on Joe Bob, and they were talking because I guess. Uh, um, Darcy's a fan of, and I'm like, and she's like, yeah, she's yeah, yeah. No, I remember I saw that where she was talking about her, but I didn't, uh, God, I must've missed that part. Yeah, she was wow. not a fan of being, she didn't really like being in horror. And I'm like, you know, I hate to say I mean, this. She made but, two iconic films. I mean, popcorn, yeah. I love popcorn. That's a great movie. Mm-hmm. And Stepfather. I mean, wow. Okay. See? Sometimes these people like I like the fact that that uh, like like Kevin Bacon. That's where he got his start. And he's still like, eh, I'll do a horror movie. I don't care. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So well, and I tell you what. I mean, look at Ethan Hawke. I mean, I uh, I was never really a big fan of his, but then he made some of the uh, some of my favorite uh, current film. I mean, Sinister. I love that film. I love. I like the purge. He was in that, and I don't know. In your movie, you say you go to the movies. Have you seen the Black Phone? Or no, I haven't seen it yet. I wanted to, but it, I can't remember what happened. Something came up that weekend, and we didn't end up going. But yeah, I want to see that because he. I'm psyched to see that. Matter of fact, I think we're. I'm going to watch it this afternoon <laughs> because it has come out. I, I think VOD, it's on the web. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and Jason Blumhouse is involved in it now, and you got the guy that directed uh, Scott Didrikson. We directed Dr. Strange directed this yeah. and uh, the producers of Sinister. I, I hope I'm not building this up to where I'm going to be disappointed I'm t- because some hey. of the best movies that I've seen, I didn't have any expectations of like trick or treat, the, the newer anthology and Sinister. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, and they turned out to be some of my favorites now, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the black phone it's, and it's Stephen King's son wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Hill. Yeah. yeah it's a Joe Hill movie. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's one of one. Oh, th- there's there's a lot of really good. What are you doing, bud? Turn it down <laughs> too. I think Turn the dog is trying to seal his blanket. Yeah, dogs are there fighting because they, they all that's all they do is they they just argue. But the dog did not fight with you. <laughs> that's cool, man. She, she comes up and like goes, ar, 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 you know, and like he's like, oh, bit me. So, <laughs> all right, yep, exactly. Um, okay. So you, I, I always ask this, but you've kind of, you've kind of acknowledged the, to the, any advice to any upcoming <laughs> our host and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, listen to, listen to him. He's yeah. telling you right now. You heard what he said? He said, don't do it. Don't do it. That, that. <laughs> no, um, I mean, I used to say that as a joke to people. Um, I mean, if you're doing, like I said, if you're doing it for the right reasons, if if this is your passion, if horror is your passion and you really want to do this from your heart, that's fine. If you're looking to make money, well, okay, that's fine too. If you if you you can do it. I mean, like I said, a lot of the hosts have Patreons now, and that, and that's great because it keeps them going. And it let and, and anything that allows them to do this, that that's fine. But I mean, if that's your sole purpose of doing it though, you're you're gonna fail. I mean, in 20 years I've seen so many come and come and go. Because some think they're going to use it as a stepping stone to something else or no. I mean, look at, I mean, a lot of the uh, horror hosts like Goulardi, Ernie Anderson. I mean, you know, they asked him to do it and he wasn't a fan of horror movies. He didn't know much about it. I mean, and, um, his thing was like, oh, OK, well, this is going to be a couple more bucks in my paycheck this week. So I'll do that. And even admittedly, Zachary, uh said he didn't see any of these movies until he started hosting. So we're a different generation. Like once the millennium hit, um, I would say we're like the first horror host that 
well, not just me. I mean, you know, we're kind of the first horror hosts that really did this because of the passion, mm -hmm. because of the movies, and because of we we loved Goulardi and Spanguli and all those guys. So we had a definite definite advantage that we were students of this. Um, those guys back then, I mean, look, look at sometimes they would pick the weatherman. You know, they go to the weatherman. Hey, you want to dress up like a goofy character? And uh, how much are you going to pay me? Okay, I'll do it. You know. So <laughs> some, I'm not saying they weren't fans. I mean, they made it, they might have been, but if you hear some of them talk, you know, it was just just the thing. Yep, it was just another job for them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's not a job because you know well it is a job, but it's not a job that you're doing because you're gonna you know become famous. You're gonna become rich. It's you're there to enjoy <laughs> it, have fun along with everybody else, and. You know, it's not a paying job. If you can make it a paying job, that's cool. But oh, I mean, yeah. from what I understand, even some of the horrors that got paid, you know, they're not, they're getting paid for working for their station, not just being a horror. I mean, there was, there was a host that I know that were multitasking, you know, doing other things, doing writing and, and you know, things like that. But uh, yep. you got to, like I said, you got to have it here. You know, yep. you got to be crazy. Number one. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that's that's I mean, that was my advice to people. If you're not getting into this for that reason, then then don't because you're going to drive yourself crazy because you were you were talking about getting mail and stuff like that. That's let, let me tell the story real quick. Um, my show debuted on a Friday night and I put three or four email addresses out there. You know, write me here or you can write me here or you can write me care of the station. You can write. And I was like, oh, I can't wait. Saturday morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to have all these emails. None. Absolutely none. And this went on for a long time. And I was like, well, damn, is anybody watching this thing? Well, I got this one email from this guy who said his wife had cerebral palsy and she was housebound. And they just happened to be clicking through and found my, my show one night. And she absolutely fell in love with it and said that he told me flat out, she lives for your show to come on every Friday. And, and just like you said, with getting mail about the cartoon, I could care less if I got a million fan letters. That was the one mm -hmm. that spoke to me the most. Like, wow, really? I've impacted somebody like that. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't want to get teary eyed here. More yeah, than it's, but, yeah. it's 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 one of them things where you're like, when 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 you kind of touch somebody that you did not expect, like I never expected in a million years that me showing Saturday morning cartoons was going to be something that somebody would care about, and right. I have these people reach out and like really heartfelt, and it's like, oh, you know, and it, it kind of like. I'm sitting there and I kind of, I read, I had to reread the reread, reread the letter a couple times. And my buddy's like sitting there looking at me, he's like, are you all right? I was like, man, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. He goes, is it bad? I'm like, no, it's good, but I'm not sure how I feel about it. And um, he came over and he read it and he's like, man, he goes, that's deep. I was like, I know. I was like, yeah, I, I don't know if I deserve something that deep. <laughs> um. Well, I, yeah, I, I believe me. That's that's it, it's amazing to impact people like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, it was like that in wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in wrestling, I hated. I didn't want to be the good guy. I didn't want. To, I wanted to be the heel because if you can get an arena full of people to boo you and hiss at you, and I mean, I'm telling you, I'll never forget there was one show I was at, and I was managing somebody. And I got the crowd so riled up, like at one point, the, the face wrestler threw me out of the ring and I landed on the floor and there was this bunch of little kids in the front row started kicking me in the back. It's just, I mean, and, and my, the one guy said to me, well, man, didn't that piss you off? I was like, hell no. I said, that was great. The fact that you can get that kind of reaction out of people. I mean, it's great being a face and everybody cheering you and everything, but I mean, you know, no, it's fun being a heel. It's fun getting people to, to well, do that. What was your, what that was your wrestling gimmick? Uh, my name was Christian Greed. That was, <laughs> and I mean, I did, I, I did mostly refereeing in the beginning. I mean, I refer the some of the bigger 
promotions. Mm -hmm. But um, for the independent ones, I was a manager. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I was trained with the wrestlers. I mean, mm -hmm. I was trained. I mean, at that time, I was like maybe, you know, 150, 160 pounds. And man, they loved me. They loved throwing me around because and they, that's why they wanted you to train as a wrestler, even though you're just a manager, because then you can interact with it. And oh, my God, I was like their tackling dummy. I mean, yep. when we used to go in and train all the time. They loved it because they could suplex me and throw me here and do this. And, and I'll tell you what, it was rough. It was, it was tough. I mean, they put you through, I mean, they put me through submission stuff. That's that old school. Oh yeah. So, so I've learned a lot of that submission wrestling stuff where, you know, I don't care if a 500 pound come, guy comes up to me, I can make him cry, you know, just by <laughs> nerve hold, whatever. But um, I mean, the reason I got where I got was because I stuck it out. I mean, there was guys, 350 400 pounders who you know they somebody put a move on them or they chopped them and they were like oh you know that hurt and they didn't show up again but i came week after week after week three times a week and that's where i got you know and it was fun it was fun so not good i never got hurt what yeah <laughs> Uh, now, how, how much did, did Halloween Jack spawn out of wrestling, or was he a completely different? Really don't. Yeah, he did. No, I mean, no, he was a completely different character, but kind of the same person. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's like I said. I mean, um, I, I liked getting people riled up, and I always mm -hmm. said, "Well, thank you." <laughs> so, <get it. laughs> I always said that if I can get people in an arena all riled up, imagine what I can do on TV and piss people like a larger group of people off. And I mean, that's kind of what my thing was in the beginning. Yeah. Was kind of being like, um, yeah. But, but um, yeah, what we're saying about the, uh, the, um, oh yeah, the wrestling. I mean, it was, it, and it's funny because I, I started out like to be a wise ass character mm -hmm. and, um, I don't know. Somewhere along the way, I got family friendly and it really kind of was weird. And I think it and I think it's when, you know, I met my wife and she joined me, you know. Well, first off, nobody ever knew who I was because you've seen me, my costume, the yeah. red hair, the glasses, all that. Whenever I was at a costume, nobody ever recognized me. And I'm telling you, I got that from the original Sven Gulli. Mm -hmm. People asked him why he wore sunglasses and the beard and the whole, you know, the white face. And he said that um, they asked him, was it so you can read cue cards? Is that why you have the sign? He goes, no. He goes, I just didn't want anybody to recognize me. I didn't want to embarrass my family. So I kind of took that cue and nobody ever knew who I was at a costume. As a matter of fact, anybody who didn't meet me, I mean, there was this one woman one time. Um, she wrote for Count Boris' site and uh, I knew her, but this was the first time I was meeting her face to face. And she was kept looking at me like a dog, like cocking her head. And I'm like, what's the matter? Because I'm not used to you with that red hair. It's weird. It's like, so, but then my wife being a redhead, when they started seeing me with her, she was recognizable. So everybody knew who I was at that point. But my point being, as, as we would go to Horror Hound year after year, kids would start coming up and asking for pictures with me and stuff like that. And, I, and which I was happy about. But then I kind of turned to my wife and said, when did I become you know, family friendly. I, I mean, you know, five years ago, I rather scared the crap out of them and had them run away from me. You know, now all of a sudden they're coming up, but no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cool feeling. It's, it, it's great. It is. It's, uh, uh, I got my first, uh, like, Hey, can we get a picture taken with you? I'm like, sure. I'll take a picture. Oh, wow. Yep. A couple weeks, a few weeks back. And I was like, man, that's weird. I and I'll know. tell you what, that never gets old, never gets old. Um, because it, the first time that I was really out at a convention um, was in 2003 at the Cinema Wasteland. Matter of fact, that's when uh, A. Gasly Gould got married there. Yep. And, you know, all of us were there. And um, people were asking me, you know, I, I really didn't think anybody outside of New Jersey knew me because I didn't think anybody inside of New Jersey knew me, you know. Yeah. But people in Ohio were, hey, Halloween Jack. Hey, can I? Th and I was like, huh? Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll take it. And 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 like I said, even to this day, 
going to a convention if someone asked me that it, it like i said that that doesn't get old that's it's a great well, feeling the the one that shocked me was was uh um i was at horror hound this year just shopping buying stuff and my wife was getting autographs i went there i went there for two autographs and to pick up some stuff and that was my whole my whole day and um we're sitting there my wife's like oh i could use something to eat real quick and let me grab something to drink so we go in the little area where they have the like the the commissary cafeteria little area and i'm i'm just sitting there kind of chilling talking to her while she's eating and these people go can we sit here and i'm like yeah and the whole entire time this lady's like looking at me and i'm like can i help you and she goes do you have a youtube channel yeah she goes, what do you do? And I was like, well, I do Saturday morning cereals and I do group there. That's where I've seen you before. And I'm like, thank you. I appreciate oh, it. Wow, man. I'm like, man, that's cool. And then um, about maybe two hours later, we're walking down the hallway. I'm, I've legitimately got a Shogun warrior in a, my bag and I'm walking along and this guy goes up and he slaps me on the shoulder. He goes, love the show, Paul. And he walks off. I don't know who he was. Wow. I don't, I was like, thank you. Thank you. And I'm like waving to whoever was just there. And I'm like, I didn't expect that at all. Wow. Was, wow. Yeah. That, see, that's cool. Yeah, literally not. See, I have people cool. coming up to me with the American Scary DVD for me to sign all the time. So that, that I got some. I think <laughs> one of the weirdest ones was this woman. Um, I, was, I was at Chiller Theater Convention in, in Jersey. I used to go to that mm -hmm. a lot. And um, I was walking around. Matter of fact, I was with this other horror host, Ormsby, another another cool guy. Mm -hmm. And I was I walked away from him, and I saw this woman talking to him in the distance. So he comes up to me, and I'm and she was pointing at me, and I and he comes up to me, and I'm like, well, what was that all about? He said she's 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 convinced that you're Kid Rock in a Halloween costume. And that woman followed me all around that convention, <laughs> and I finally confronted her and i'm like look i'm not kid rock and she's like yes you are and i was like okay fine she took a picture with me and i'm sure she went back and told everybody look i got a picture with kid rock <laughs> okay but you know i i used to get that <laughs> hey aren't you that guy in that band yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well, well, wow was, yeah. I, I there's a picture of me because uh um with the beard and, and uh, at one time i actually had long hair and um Everybody used to think I was one of the guys from the band Mudvayne. So oh, wow. I have a picture of me with the guy from Mudvayne. So we're both there. We're both their hair. The both <laughs> beards like, see, not the same guy. <laughs> Damn, the see, I wish I could find Kid Rock and take a pic with him. And, you know, and say, hey, look. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was flattered, but I mean, I mean, I, it just believe me, I love people. You know, but it just, you know, it's kind of weird when you say, well, look, I'm not. They just won't believe you. And, no, so, you know, some people like, think that you're just messing with them. So, okay. You know, yeah. So, like I said, if I took a picture with her and she went and told all her friends I was Kid Rock, if I made her happy, good. Good on More her. Power to her. Good on her. More power to her. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I don't I don't want to waste too much of your time. We've been here about an hour and a half. And Vince. I think, really? Seriously, yeah, it's uh hour twenty three thereabout. Well, like we just started. Yeah. Gee. No, you're not wasting my time. I really, I have nothing to do. I'm, I'm having a Zoom meeting at six thirty. Oh, okay. I've got plenty of about, time about the channel. So about the future of the channel. So oh, cool. you, I'm, um, what, what, whatever, man. I'll, I, you, you can hear me. I'll talk. Sweet. I'll talk your ears off, dude. So just yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> funny because. I, I've got I've got so many interviews that I have to go back and do a part two of because they're like, oh, well, how long have we been on this episode? I'm like, two hours. Yeah. They're like, oh, we got a lot more to talk about. I was like, okay, we're oh, having yeah. part two down the road. Well, and that's what Raul Madblood keeps telling me. He's like, man, we're going to do a part two and three and four. And, you know, this is and, and this is what I said to him. It's unfortunate that um, I, I told you I watched a lot of what my parents watched. And I think it's unfortunate sometimes, and I'm not saying this happens with everybody, but I think back to when my parents passed away, and I never really talked to them about a, a lot of this. I never really asked them, well, how was your experiences going to the movies? And did you go to see Dracula when it came out? Because you were 10 years older. And, uh, you know, my father was in World War II, and I'm sure he had stories. And I never, 
really asked him about a lot of this. And, and like I said, I was talking to Raul about this and I said, this is why now that I'm, you know, I never really used to do a lot of interviews. And I said, this is why I want to do this now, because now that I'm in my sixties, I just feel I have a lot to tell everybody. And maybe there'll be that 14 year old kid out there who might watch this or something and get interested in it. Um, and um, excuse me, that's, you know, that's why I'm sharing these stories with people now because I want people to know what it was like for me growing up, because I'm telling you, I had a blast as a kid yeah. I mean, growing up in the sixties and seventies. I mean, a lot of this was new. Um, you know, uh, horror hosting's always had its ups and downs. And I can tell you, I can tell you the exact years of those ups and downs. I mean, uh, you know, 57, 58. Well, of course it started with vampire back in 54, 55, but again, that didn't last long either. Um, but then, uh, you know, 58, when the shock package came out, then all of a sudden it died off again, but then it came back in 62. If you look up horror hosts in 1962, I can't believe how many there were that all of a sudden that year, what it was about that year, 62, 63, there's a ton of them. Then as the mid sixties went back, dropped down again. Then the seventies came early seventies again, picked up. It's like there's these hills and valleys all the time to horror hosting. And right now, I, I think we're at a peak. I think there's a lot of interest in it right now. And 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 I I credit that to, I mean, there was a lot of interest in the 80s because of Elvira. But right now, I credit a lot of that to Joe Bob and, and Sven Gulli, that people are interested in this. Okay. So, good. Good for us. Yeah. I mean, legitimately, with Sven Gulli being on MeTV, um, yeah, that's 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 over the air that you can get. You don't have to have cable. You don't have to have nothing. You can legitimately can put an antenna on your house and get that channel. My mom lives out in the country. Um, I this is a house I didn't gr grow up, grow up in his house, but I spent a lot of time in his house. It's right between two towns. You get no cable. Your phone's not that good. You can't get cell phone reception, stuff like that. She calls me up. She goes, I just watched Frankenstein on Svengoolie. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I know, right? That was on there. She goes, oh, I, I, she goes, I remember watching that. And, and uh, she she was telling me about when she grew up watching, you know, the horror host that, that she had. And I can't remember who the, but she remembers watching Shock Theater when she was a kid. And uh, she's born in 54. So probably 60 two to 64 probably when she was eight to ten years old you know with her friends well, maybe it was maybe it was Gilardi because Gilardi had shocked there I mean was this in Ohio or yes yeah. yeah yeah, yeah it could be I mean yeah. his his he was he was shocked theater before he started using his own using the Gilardi name so it could be yeah, cool. hey let me tell you something I have an older sister and um she she was the one that really kind of helped me too with you know starting with the horror my love of horror because she took me to see a lot of movies, but she's a big Sven Gulli fan. I mean, a big Sven Gulli fan. She's never talked about horror hosts in the past, but, and I always kid around saying, for God's sake, here you have a brother who's been a horror host for 23 years and you're a Sven Gulli fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even think she's ever seen one of my episodes. And then I think about it. <laughs> Well, it's, it's like I, I give my I give my friends crap. They're like, I was like, have you guys ever watched one of my shows? And they're like, well, a couple, maybe. I don't know. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, they see to me. I when we did the Re Roku channel, I mean, I kind of made a mistake with the Roku channel. I should have started as an on demand because it was streaming. They wouldn't certify it. If it was on demand, I could have gotten it certified and then probably added streaming. So that was my fault. I made a big, big mistake doing that. Um, and that's why we're not certified and it's hard, you know, to find it. And now they've gotten rid of a lot of the private channels. Now, thankfully, we're still there. I mean, we, we still have the channel. People yeah. still watch it and, and and everything. But I wish I had done it differently. Yeah. And my thing was I didn't want to do on demand I, I want the channel, like I said, to be a channel like we watched as a kid. You had to sit there and watch it. Mm -hmm. Like when we, we looked in the front in, the, in the, the, the TV guide and you saw Frankenstein was coming on. 
like, oh, my God. And you had to be there to watch it. Yeah. There was no, you know, <laughs> and they didn't show those movies that, that often no. on TV. I mean, you know, Universal they did, but, you know, and that's my only problem now. I just feel there's so much out there, so much on demand, so much on YouTube. I mean, really, who's got the time to watch all this? I mean, being I do the channel, sometimes I can take a look at a, a host gives me a show and I can stand through it, like look at their bits and everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I've ever sat down and watched a whole horror hosted show in years. I, I just don't have the time. I mean, like I said, I, I, I looked at your channel. I saw what you did. I, you know, I had time to watch a couple episodes. But I mean, for the most part, who, I mean, seriously, who's got the time? There's so much out there and so much good stuff. It's a shame. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'd love to sit there and watch it all. Yeah. You know, so many good horror hosts. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's what I, one of the things I do like about being able to have my shop because, you know, I'll sit there and I'll just be like, all right, you know, I've watched my shows and stuff like that. And he'll watch stuff sometimes. He'll, he'll, he'll come over on my side of the shop. But uh, he's got his TV and his video game system over on the other side, don't you, bud? Yep. And so some days I'll just be like, uh, you know what? I'm watching horror hosts. I'll just find a horror host on and I'll put it on, on, on the TV and I'll run it. And then sometimes it'll go to their next episode or sometimes the algorithm will go yeah. to another horror host. And I'll just keep trucking right along. Like one day I started out with... Yeah. Um, monster madhouse so i started out with uh uh carlos and uh i think then the next one i think was a sally episode and then it went and did um uh it did, did like two of another and then another one was starting when i left and it was you know in you know the entire day there was four different hosts a and that was just let it run. Look behind you, Dad. But then I've let it run. Yeah. Where it was just like, um, look behind you. Well, okay. Oh. Yep. Look at it. Okay, I see it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Don't you start. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my cat just attacked my dog. <laughs> my hey, we'll leave the dog in. alone. He's got to go. He won't go let Abby in. Um, <laughs> and, and then the, like a week later, I went to do the same thing. And then it just run the same host for, a, you know, like three episodes. I'm like, eh, I want to change it and put a different host on. But it all just depends on the algorithm that day, I guess. You know, it's like, oh, this is what you're watching today. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, I don't know if you watch Tubi. I like Tubi. They got a lot of great horror movies on there. And the thing I like about Tubi when the movie's over, a similar movie will start right mm -hmm. after. And I mean, one time, I think it was, I love those anthologies like Asylum, The House of Drip Blood, all those mm -hmm. things. And one day I turned it on and it was like one after another. They just came on one after another. I was like, wow, that's great. I don't know. I've had stuff on YouTube and sometimes it'll something will pop up that has nothing to do with what I was watching before. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how it works. I don't either. And, I mean, you know. Sometimes it will, like you said, you watch our host at the heart. I don't know. I've had to do that to me where all of a sudden I'm like, why did this, you know, <laughs> why did this pop up? But yeah, it's like these interviews. I mean, I, I you know, I'm at this computer all day doing this channel. I mean, it, it takes a lot to do this, but like with the interviews, at least I put on my headphones and I can listen to you guys. I don't necessarily have to see it, but yep. you know. That's how I heard your interviews. That's how I heard uh, Raul's. Hey, get off! Yeah, that <laughs> that, that that was funny because because what? Oh, the dog's fine. Abby, go lay down. Go lay down. Don't go over sit on the couch. Go upstairs. Uh, she 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 can't get you if you're in your room. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Raul, me and him have been working talking about doing something, and he finally got me on his show, and that was weird because he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm nervous interviewing you," and I'm like why i'm like i'm just i'm nobody i don't know yeah I'm nervous so well, yeah he, he said that to me and i'm like why don't don't be nervous so i gotta ask you how weird was it for you to be interviewed it was a little <laughs> weird it was uh it, it was fun um 
it, it was because uh, he's like, oh, you know, you know, asking me these questions. I'm like, dude, well, I don't, I don't want you to. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm honest about everything. I don't, I don't hide anything because, because, you know, that's like I tell yeah. people this that, that they're like, oh, why do you work so much? I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was an alcoholic. So my whole thing was I'm sober. I'm, I'm, I've been sober for like almost eight years. And so I keep myself busy no, for you, man. because it, it, it keeps my mind off of it, keeps me out of trouble. And so I'm, I'm honest. And I tell people, you know, also people ask me, you know, what it takes. To, I was like, you just got to decide you want to be sober. And one day it, it may take a couple of times. Then one day you'll, it'll snap and you'll, you'll stick and hopefully yeah. it'll stay. So, so what are you doing now? Well, I had a, I had a serious drug addiction when I was a teen. And I got out of that and I know what you mean. I mean, it's like I, I told you, I mean, the thing that really got me out of that was music. That's what I focused on after not, not making music, but I mean, uh, you know, once, once I got out of that, that's when the whole punk scene started. So I used to hang at CBGB's all the time, you know, then and watch all these bands and I got really into the music, but that's my point about people in horror being so focused. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, and I've said this before, it's the people that are not focused are the ones you got to watch, you know, people yeah. who have, you know, <laughs> too much time in their hands and no purpose, you know, that, that's the ones, but that's what impresses me about everybody. And again, just about everybody I've ever met in horror, whether it's a celebrity, whether it's another horror host, whether it's uh, an interviewer, you know, everybody's been great. I, um, well, almost everybody. There's been, you know. Like you were saying, what you said, you got one hate letter. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got, I got one hate message. <laughs> I, I can't tell you. And then I, I, got, I don't know. And it was, it, and it's, I don't know. As, as the, I, the hate mail for what it is. It's like, why, why are you bothering? You know. Th this is how I look at it. Is uh, that's how I knew I made it? Because if somebody had mm -hmm. to take time out of their day to tell me. That uh, and it was funny because I, I can I can tell you what it said. It was, uh, um, um, I wish you didn't. I love your show, but I I, I wish I didn't have to suffer through you. Um, that we could just yeah. watch the show without you. And I'm like, there's there's the doo -doo 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 -doo. done. You're done. You can just. Pass <laughs> <with that." laughs> but I go, man. I was like, that's how you know it big because because the fact that you had to take, and it wasn't a short letter, so they had to, you know, type. I was like, that they stopped what they were doing, wrote that, mm -hmm. <laughs> sent it. <laughs> I affected them that much that they had to write that. I, hey. Well, <laughs> one part of the movie, Private Parts, which the Howard Cern yeah. story that I took away from that was the part where they were showing the ratings and how good his ratings were and they were like well who's watching i mean who's who's listening to him they said the people that hate him are are the biggest demographic and they're like well if they hate him why are they listening to him because they want to see what he's going to say next mm -hmm. and i'm telling you i took a lot away from that and and you're right you know look at we get people in chat all the time Oh, I don't like this horror host, or I don't like this. And and my attitude was, look at that's your opinion, but mm -hmm. then what are you doing here? Yep. Why are you sitting here watching this? You know, uh, go watch something else. Go watch another horror host on YouTube. You know. Yep. Go watch Paul Lee. Go watch yeah. his interviews. You know. <laughs> <laughs> there is part. I, I mean, you're right. It's weird that they're taking the time out to tell you this stuff, and they and they're watching you. You know. Well, you know, we go back, go back to wrestling, you know, there, if, if, you know, I have friends that were heels and that's how they knew if they affected people that got angry and hated them, they knew they'd done oh, their job gosh. well, and then they can make the, the, the face look better. And, you know, I always hated, you know, I'm one of them guys who always liked the heel better than the face because I thought the, the heel had more personality, you know. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. I was always like that. Yep. I, I always read it for them. Well, I'll tell you a story. Um, I was refereeing an ECW show in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And um, now at the time that I was with them, they weren't extreme. They yet. were just it was Eastern Champions. Eastern Championship. Right. 
mm-hmm. because um, a lot of the guys that I worked with and, and trained with in my wrestling school worked with them. And um, they kind of got out of it when it got extreme. And I did too. But anyway, there was one night where I was refereeing and, and I made a bad call. And these two guys, one of them was um, um, the guy who later became Nunzio okay. in, in ECW and, and WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, he and this other wrestler, the Kodiak Bear, we were leaving to go back to his car and it was a rental car. And there was all these little kids waiting for us outside, throwing rocks at us. And he was getting, and, and the one guy was egging him on. The Kodiak Bear, he's like, come on, come here, yeah, come on. And Nunzio was getting mad. He's, he's like, no, that's a rental car. They're pelting my rental car, you know. And, but the point being, gosh, they got that mad that they were waiting for us outside with rocks. I was like, whoa, that's powerful. That's real powerful. Well, you, you talk about ECW. Um, I was at Hair Arena for, was it Heat Wave 98, I believe. And you can look it up. It's the Hair Arena incident. It's the one with uh, Bubba Ray Dudley where he almost incited a riot. I was there. Uh-huh. And oh, yeah. yeah. The fact that, that, that and, and people can hate, you know, Bully Ray, Bubba Ray as much as they want. But, that's a guy who knew how to get people to hate him. And, you know, Mm -hmm. and that people were just mad. And, you know, that's like, I grew up with, uh, um, uh, um, the free birds and they, you know, when they turned on, on Eric, Oh my God, those guys, that's great. The history. Oh man. And, and, and it's funny because when you, when you really look at it, who were the real bad guys? Because the, the Von Erics were not good people <laughs> at that point. <laughs> yeah, and and well, and imagine that the Freebirds had to be uh, had to have security and police. Mm-hmm. Yep. That what does that say? I mean that that's uh, I'm, you know I get floored when I hear stuff like that that they they made that big of an impact on people. Oh, those two are good feuds. So that that was amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah what else is funny is there's there's a guy out there now and i always joke around because i had somebody who told me they would train me just so i could have this match but there is the (laughs) nature boy paul lee and it's a dude who just completely does the rick flair knockoff supposedly he got the okay from rick flair and i don't see it but you can look him up he's the nature boy paul lee and uh i i don't because he's 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 not good and I'm, I'm always like, he's not a good wrestler. He's been, I guess he's been like, had guns pulled on him in the ring because he's a dick. And wow. <laughs> like, I like almost been stabbed. Um, but I has have the ongoing joke that, that uh, I, if I have one wrestling match, I want it to be for him against him for the name to <laughs> who can actually be the real Paul Lee. So, there you go. <laughs> and, I'd, uh, I'd pay to see that. I train you. Yeah. I could train you. Yeah. And you I told him, I was it. like, I do I do hair for name because I'll just shave my head just don't be guilty. And uh, I'll be like when back when Hulk Hogan and 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 uh, uh, Macho Man were complaining about their hair, they have, I have more hair than they got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow! Uh, but yeah, he's that'd he's, be cool. I got to look him up. I've never heard of him, but yeah, then I'm, I'm not. You know, I haven't been up. I mean, I watch the current stuff. You know, not an AEW fan by any means. I mean, but I but I do feel not to be a conspiracy theorist, but I do feel there is collusion between AEW and WWE. I don't think it's everything you're hearing at the bay. I believe there's just so many things that are going on. And I'll tell you one one thing that is glaring to me. Um, Chris Jericho being on Stone Cold show. Mm hmm. And even Jericho said, "Wow, was somebody going to attack me when I come in here?" Now you know, if you've been, a, if you follow wrestling, you know Vince McMahon is not like that. If somebody leaves his company, until they come back and want to be a part of the company again, he's not letting anybody on anybody's no. show that is part of another federation. So this is telling me there's something, you know. Because now all of a sudden Tony Khan's talking about, oh, I wouldn't be opposed to a AEW 
WWE Super Show, well, which would be great. But I'm the, I'm telling you, there's. I think that I think. Wait a minute, there's something going on. They're, well, they're working together. I think that WWE works with Impact. Because you know they, they've done the vignettes. They had uh, Mickey James in the Royal yeah. Rumble as the, right. the Impact Champion. Um, oh yeah, there, there's and like a lot I said there. in the past. There would be no way in hell he would do that. No, the only way he started working with ECW was when he bought it. Yeah, <laughs> you know when he started giving money to Heyman. Yep, yep. Because of um, uh, who was it that they? The reason they started giving him money wasn't it? Uh, um, too cold Scorpio because he had a yeah. deal. Yeah. He had like a deal to, to bring money into so that he, the yeah. WWE covered that money. So. And then he started using the wrestlers and there's no way in hell that he would. I mean, I'm telling you, once you, you parted company with, with him, whether it was on good terms or not, he's not going to promote whatever wrestling federation you're in. Nope. So when he had Jericho, well, I have an inside story and I shouldn't, I don't know if I should say this, but um, I have a friend who's a, a ref for WWE and um, it was after one of the pay-per-views, they were bringing the ring back to their warehouse, that big warehouse where they have all the memorabilia. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say the name, but this was the day before AEW had their pay-per-view. They had a, um, they had a convention, like a memorabilia convention the day before, and then they had their first pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And there was an ex-WWE wrestler that was working for AEW in the warehouse, looking at stuff to take to this show. And I said to my friend, there's no way in hell Vince McMahon would let that happen. And it was somebody that had recently left the company. So, again, I... I don't want to get in trouble and have anybody beat down my door for giving <laughs> yeah, that information. Was, but so that was Starcast One, right? Um, whatever their first paper. No, wasn't it all, all or nothing? Whatever that no, was because uh, you had all in, and then they had their memorabilia slash like um, convention, which was Starcast. Yeah. Okay, that's is, probably what it was then. I I want to say that's. I think that's like Conrad Thompson, but I'm not 100 percent if that's Conrad Thompson or not. And I'm telling you, I mean, this wrestler was in the warehouse and I'm like, there is no way, no way Vince McMahon is going to let him take stuff for a show that's for a rival company. So I'm telling you, you know, well, there, there's stuff going on. They had that memorabilia show on A&E. And by the time the memorabilia show aired, almost all the people that were on the show were on AEW, but they still ran that show. I'm yeah. like, dude, if, if if I was somebody and all my talent had gone and those were the talent that I was promoting on that show, I'd be like, yeah, don't air that episode. We'll do something else. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm not giving them any any free publicity. No. So no, that was I'm telling you, 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 you uh, and I've, I've argued with people about this. All my wrestling buddies they are like, nah, they're not working. I, I'm, I'm telling you, don't be shocked when you hear it. Is I'm telling you. And now, like I said, Tony Khan making this big announcement of, oh, I wouldn't mind working with the WWE in a super show. And I was like, and, and believe me, there's other things I could say. I'm not going uh, to say I, it. Yeah. I've got I've got some conspiracies of my own right now, and I don't I don't know if they're true or not, but I could I could could see not I could I could see with with everything that's going on with Vince McMahon right now, with the whole, you know to drive his prices down on his uh, um, own stock so that he could mm -hmm. buy back all of his stock and then just be done with it so that he would, that yeah. the man's would be the, the owners of WWE anymore. And then they could do whatever they wanted again. And I can yeah. see them. I mean, look at they've gotten this far. <laughs> they've gotten this far being smart, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So yeah, that could happen. You know, that I, could happen. I, I grew up in the uh, very end of the of the territories. So when I was a kid, it was still NWA, Mid-South, um, Georgia, uh, AWA, and uh, WWF. Mid-Atlantic. Mid I love Mid-Atlantic mid last night. That was yeah. good. Good stuff. And um, I got I got hooked on um, – I was a, a Georgia championship guy myself because I was – 
Uh, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, still to this day, is Arn Anderson. And everybody's like, why yeah. Arn Anderson? I was like, because he looks like a dude. He just looked like a dude that could beat the crap out of you. And he didn't wasn't jacked. He wasn't, you know, he didn't do full. Oh, no. Yeah, he just a barrel chested dude. <laughs> and and he and you know something? He he didn't need a gimmick. No. I mean, yeah, they called him the enforcer. Enforcer, yeah. Him part of the four horsemen and all that. But I mean, no, he he, he didn't need a gimmick. Him, Tully Blanchard. I mean, I love those days in wrestling. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I always frowned upon a lot of the gimmicks that were going on with WWE at the time. You know, Mantor and Mantor. guy coming the, out wearing a big bull head. And I mean, oh, yeah. you know, it, it was it was ridiculous. I mean, it served its purpose. Mm-hmm. But I give a lot of respect to people like Flair and them that they really didn't need their gimmick. Their wrestling was their gimmick. Yeah. And they were great wrestlers. I know I loved Arn Anderson, too. I loved the Four Horsemen. I thought the whole, you know, Barry Windham, oh, too, yeah. and other I was I was always a uh, um, the brain busters the 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 four horsemen though it's Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson those guys were were great and it's like yeah. I, I went back and was rewatching old stuff the other day and I was like oh my god I forgot Doom ah oh, Ron Simmons and- oh my gosh I love Ron Simmons I lo- he is such a cool dude I'm mm-hmm. telling you he's he's I, you know the one thing I always regret is that I was at a horror hound convention and he was there. And I wanted to go up on my camera and just do a promo and have him stand next to me and have the camera on me and say, hey, you're watching, you know, Halloween Jack in the Haunted Theater. And then I have it pan over to him and have him go, damn. damn. And I never I I was a, I couldn't pull the trigger. I was afraid to ask him. because, But yet somebody else asked him to do stuff and he did it. So <laughs> I, I should have just I should have just did that. But um, yeah. yeah, those I mean, it was weird. The Brain Busters. I mean, they were good in WWE, but it was out of place. I mean, no, it, yeah, it they, just was out of place. Yeah, they 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 and, and like been I said, they, you know, that gimmick filled. You know, they just were not. They were good. Like I said, they were good there, and they had some great matches against. You know, what was it the Rockers? Yeah, but um, they were just so out of place. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, people complain that you know you need competition. Um. I, I just feel that all these independent wrestling federations, I mean, you still have the NWA, you mm-hmm. know, out there too, um, are fine. I, I don't like, I didn't like the fact that some ex WWE guys decided, well, we're going to do this, you know, do AEW and, and, and don't sit there and tell me you're not competing with them. That's a load of crap. <laughs> you know, the, that's exactly what you're doing. But I'm sorry. I can see it going the way of WCW. Uh, I understand competition is good, and I understand it's good to have other federations, but you know something? I like you. I like the territories, but I'm sorry. I'm, you're never going to beat McMahon. I don't care what you do. You are not going to beat that man or his family. No. The, the, those the, They've been there for a reason for that long. And, you know, because everybody's like, oh, but, but yeah, but it was his dad who had the WWF first. Then it became the WWF and then WWE. But, you know, he, you know, everybody's like, well, he created pay-per-view. I was like, no, he didn't. The, the, there was pay-per-views before WrestleMania. Oh, Starcade. Starcade yeah. came out a year before WrestleMania. And, um, oh, well, then, it, you know, you had Supercard or uh, Super Clash. And all those, and I'm like, you know, people talk about the, the, the Forbidden Door and all this stuff like that. I was like, man, they were doing that years ago. I remember when yep. Ric Flair wrestled Kerry yep. Von Erich because, you know, Kerry Von Erich was the WCCW and and Ric Flair was the NWA. And and um, what was the one uh, you had the, the USWA versus the AWA? And that's, you know. Oh, yeah. And then you had uh, one that popped up that actually, uh, you what was it that... Um... UWF that had yeah. the free birds in it and a, a lot of the stars that went to WWF came from UWF because you had Hacksaw Jim Duggan mm-hmm. was in there you had the free birds see that's what I always regretted the free birds didn't they had one or two matches in WWE and then it was like they disappeared and I was and I was really looking forward to that at the time I, because they were going to make them part of that whole rock and wrestling thing mm-hmm. but I don't know what happened it just didn't work out but that uwf i think that was bill watts 
who did yep. that. And yep. that was a good show. Sting came out of there. Mm-hmm. The Ultimate Warrior, they were called uh, yeah, Blade, Blade Runners, Runners yep. at the time. That was a good, I tell you what, I like that show a lot. There was some really good talent on there. It's not that UWF that came back later with, what was it, Herb? Uh, no. Herb, Herb, whatever his name. Yeah. That was all the washed up WWF guys at that point. <laughs> And did you see that? Wasn't it on Dark Side of the Ring? Yep. They talked about that guy. Yeah, that was oof. That's a rough show. That <laughs> their their uh, um, was it. Vice said that that um, you know, oh, we've got great numbers. It always does great. And they're like, well, are you bringing it back? No. And they're like, yeah. why are you not bringing it back? And I was like, probably because too many people are like complaining about it. And then you got the people who are like, yeah, I can't be on that show no more because uh, um. Um, I know that, that uh, Jim Ross isn't doing any more episodes. Um, I don't think there's some other people who aren't doing any more episodes. And it's because the, because of the plane ride from hell episode, from what I understand. Because yeah. that made everybody look bad. And I'm like, who would have guessed that a bunch of guys slammed into a plane for X amount of hours getting hammered are going to do stupid stuff? So, yeah. Um, so you know what it's going to be like that with anything oh yeah you you realize what a plane float of football players is probably like back in the day yeah. or how about a plane load of horror hosts i bet you there's a lot of stories there too so. <laughs> and believe me i know some of the background stories of some guys that i mean you know what look at it, it's 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 nobody's business you know, that that's the way I see it. I mean, I like Fangoria magazine, but when they came out with that article about Lon Chaney Jr. being alcoholic and all that, I, I, I it turned me off to that magazine. It was a great, I mean, it's a good magazine and everything, but it's like, I don't need to read that stuff about him. I don't care what these guys do. As long as they're not hurting anybody. If they, they want, you know, hey, <laughs> you want to drink yourself into oblivion every night, that's your business, you know? It's And it, and it wasn't like it was, I hate to say it wasn't like it wasn't common knowledge. I mean, I knew that when I was a kid, I knew that that Lon Chaney Jr. was an alcoholic. I mean, I've seen the footage, you know, and you see, especially them right there towards the end where, you know, you're like, OK, well, he's fine, 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 fine. And it's like you kind of see the decline. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. Then they're like, oh, he's out. Yeah, I wasn't blind. I mean, I wasn't. <laughs> but. Well, and I'm telling you, as somebody that was on the road for a you know, period of time with the wrestling, I mean, I, I, you know, I said this before, the reason I stopped was because, you know, I, my kids were small. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, here I was working a regular job during the week and doing a lot of stuff on the weekends with wrestling. I was never home. And I came home one Sunday night. And my son ran away from me like he didn't know who I was, you know, crying to his mother. And I was like, no, that's the end of this with me. And this is what people need to understand about these guys. This, that's a rough life. It is a rough life. The yeah, others, a lot of adulation. Yeah, now they're making mega bucks and yeah, they can become movie stars or whatever. But the guys that are in the trenches in this, that's it's a rough life. And I mean, that's what it was with me. I mean, traveling and traveling and and going and doing a show and then barely getting time to eat and then going to the next one. And it, it's rough. So I'm not condoning anything they did, you know, especially but, on that flight. But, it's but I mean, I can understand it, you know. Yeah, Cause it's, it's, and what, what's bad is seeing some of these guys, you know, that, you know, they, you get the guys who a got their stuff together, saved money, whatever, you know, what, but then you see the ones that, uh, I'm not going to put any names out there, but they're still out there doing the indie shows. Yep. Making because they have to. Yep. And you're just like, man, you, you made that's, money. You know, really basically all they have, and that's their only way of making any kind of money. They, they, they you know, uh, we, we were joking about this yesterday. Me and my son were coming back from, because he works, my 22-year-old works for me. And we were driving back, and I was like, you know, there are people that, you know, the you know Lars Ulrich, the drummer, that's his the only band he's ever been in is Metallica. That's mm -hmm. his only band he's ever been in. Uh, you know, that's like saying uh John Bonham, the only band he was ever in was Led Zeppelin. You know, you know, even like other bands like Kiss, Kiss was in other bands before they were Kiss, you know. The other guys from Metallica were all in other bands, 
but there's this one guy who's yeah. been doing the exact same thing. And that's all he's ever done, you know? So there's guys who got out of college, you know, got out of, went directly into wrestling. And that's the only thing they've ever done, ever yep. done, you know, yep. at least, at least Duke, the dumpster Drosy was a garbage man at one point. <laughs> really? He was a garbage man at one point that became a <laughs> oh, yeah. garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> well thank uh, god uh, uh, isaac yankum wasn't really a dentist imagine, you imagine kane's big old hands trying to get in your mouth oh my <laughs> gosh jeez uh, wow who who was your favorite wrestler growing up um it it's funny i have to say the 80s version of adrian adonis was uh you know, I liked him a lot when he was still doing the New York gimmick, you know, before he, you know, did the flower shop and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I really liked him a lot. But as a kid, um, superstar Billy Graham, he was, I mean, there you go. Again, a heel, interesting, yep. and draws your attention, you know. He was, uh, I liked him a lot. Oh, yeah. He was, he, well, he's the prototype. I mean, he's the prototype for yeah. Hulk Hogan and Jesse Ventura. So, and Jesse Ventura, yeah, rapping like Ali, you know, just, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's funny because even as a kid, you know, they used to, and, and nothing against Bruno San Martino, God rest his soul, but they always, you know, used to talk about him being the good guy and everything. But if you watched his matches against a lot of those people, all he ever did was kick, kick and punch and kick and punch and, he never really did too many wrestling holds. And it would, even as a kid, I used to sit there and say, well, geez, he's just as bad as the heel. What is, you know, he's, what does everybody like him? You know, I know I was really big into the, the, the heels after that. I mean, I like Superfly Snooker when he was still with Albano and stuff like that. God, you want to talk about taking your life into your hands? I would go to see the shows at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And I'm telling you, you think the Spectre, you think the Philadelphia fans, like the Eagles fans and everything are, are hardcore? You go to the wrestling matches and root for the heels. I almost got attacked by this group, <laughs> this group of kids. And I was just sitting in the stand. And I think Jimmy Snuka was fighting Pedro Morales for the Intercontinental belt. Pedro Ma Morales had the belt. And I was sitting there yelling, take that belt. And these kids were turning around, shut up, shut up. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm not going to lie. About a couple years back, I almost got into a fight because the guy just, like, we were just giving crap. You know, it wasn't like it was an indie show. We, mm -hmm. I knew the guy, in the, you know, it was like I, I personally knew the guy in the ring, and we were just, just giving crap. And this guy's like, no, no. And he's, like, getting the – I'm like, you need to move that finger, dude. I'm not going <laughs> Wow. Like, like I know you've had a couple drinks, but that's not going to save you from an ass whooping. <laughs> uh, well, isn't it isn't it funny how it's all come out about what wrestling is now, and people still still believe oh, it. People I mean, are passionate about it. Yeah, they like I said, yeah, it's good and bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's what's neat is is that uh, me and my buddy were just talking about this. He got to go to ECW Arena. Um, to go see um, uh, a show relatively recently. And he got to see uh, uh, Oneida versus uh, um, Bully Ray. So mm -hmm. the, the, the king of the Japanese death match versus yeah. uh, Oneida versus... Uh, uh, and he got to drive over. He drove all the way over there, watched the match with his friends, and they all loaded up the van and came all the way back. So they drove like like I like ten hours there and ten hours back, and they, all they did was watch the event. But he goes, oh. you know, we got to see this. I'm like, the only thing I have, I've never been to the to Madison Square Garden. I've never been to the Sportatorium. I, I've been past the Sportatorium when I was a kid. Evidently, I don't even remember it. Um, you know, I've never been to ECW Arena. The one place that I've been was I was at a comic book convention in the early 90s in Atlanta. And they came in and they gave free tickets to go to the Omni. Oh, my gosh. To wow. go see 
you know, WCW wrestling at the Omni. And I'm just sitting there. I was like, and I expect, I don't, I don't know what I expected, but you know, I'd always heard, you know, <laughs> on wrestling tonight at the Omni, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, the Omni was mythic, myth, you know, mythological to me. And then I get there and I'm like, oh no, this is kind of dirty. <laughs> it's kind of, and it was, it was at the end of its life. It wasn't like it was, uh, you know, so. Oh, I'm, I mean, the Omni was the equivalent of the garden. Yep. In Atlanta. Oh, that's Slash right there talking to me. Uh. Yep. <laughs> Tell him I said hi. Tell him I said, how dare he interrupts my interview. <laughs> I will message him. Um, so, how long were you? How long were you a, a uh, ref for ECW before? Uh, it was it was uh, it was short. It was like I started like around ninety one, and I was done with it by ninety three. So it was only a couple of years. Oh, so it was just just at the very end of the uh, um, the the extra, the Eastern Championship then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, a lot of people I knew when that started happening, they got they got out of it. Shh. Hey. One thing about a coon hound, I'm telling you, very vocal. <laughs> oh man, it, it's that, that's that's like that dog, my wife's dog. That, that dog got got to be right, right there, right there all the time. And my well, dog, her, <laughs> huh? Who? She's not eating it. No, well, then give it to her. I don't care. <laughs> oh man but all right what is he saying Tell him I oh i just say he goes he's asking me when we can get it it was like uh can we do it earlier late afternoon on wednesday before 9 p.m uh ba -ba -ba -ba. if not then we can do it next week and um i might be able to squeeze him in before you tell him you're interviewing me right now yeah i just told him i said jack said how dare you interrupt his interview <laughs> Uh, let's see <laughs> about Wednesday. No, I'll tell you what, he's a great guy. Did you oh, see? Have you seen the post recently about what he sent my wife? No. That mask. The honey, can you show? Can you give me the tourist trap mask? No, you get out of here. <laughs> get, 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 get. get. <laughs> Now, okay, mind um, you, that you can see. Hold on a second. You can see back there, I think. All right, well, turn it down. All right. You hear that? It's very, very loud. <laughs> no. What is that? <laughs> yes. Did they all eat? <laughs> hey, my my dogs can hear your cat, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> all right, you come on, come on, go, <laughs> go for go for now. As you can see, that poster behind me. I think you can say a tourist trap. Oh yeah, the tourist. Yes, my I wife is that, a, yeah. my wife is a huge fan of it. Oh, I love that. So, movie. Toby found a mask on eBay and then made that for her. That's great. Yeah, yes, I did I'll tell you that. what, he is something else. We, I mean, he 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 created this from it was it you know it was a very generic mask, uh, but it, I mean from tourist trap. It yeah, he, he's amazing. Yeah. He, that, that whole costume he's got, man, is, is stupid oh, good. He's, he's great. Shh. Stop. Yeah, it sits prominently on her. Um, where's my... Uh, let me show you something else he made me. I'll tell you what, he's, again, very generous. Let's see where I'm going to put this on so you can see it. Can you hear it? Ah, horror host. You got it upside down. But, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> there you go. There, yeah. Hall of Fame. There it is. Boom. Right there. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah, he made that for me. I'm telling you, he's yeah. It's, it's almost like getting a WWE ring, you know, Hall of Fame ring. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a good dude. He's really good. Good brother. That's awesome. That's awesome. He's yeah, he's I, that's one thing I, I, I like about doing all this. Is because I've I've followed a lot of you guys. I've 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 mm -hmm. watched it, and now I'm actually being able to talk to you. And I I a lot of them. I mean, like Hack and and uh, Doctor Zombo out, and and I, I be, I'm becoming friends with these. I mean, and I've never met any of them in real in in you know, but it's cool. We're we're like planning to meet up sometime, 
and it's like just having a friend I haven't seen in a couple years, and that's what we talk like. And it's like me and you having this whole discussion now. I'm like, yeah. literally, one of my best friends in in school. We get together every once in a while. We talk wrestling. We grew, you know, we grew up on wrestling. We're having we we're having almost the exact same conversation we're having. Right now. <laughs> so. I know the same thing with all these guys. It's either wrestling or horror, and and, and the, you know, I'm surprised how many are into both. Yeah, I mean, well, Matt Brassfield. Brassfield is, you know, he's working with the wrestling crew. Yeah, that's that's my uh, friends wrestling organization down in Dayton. Yeah, my buddy Gigi's part owner of it. So yeah, it's funny. I had this wrestling show on the channel for a while I'm trying to remember i can't even remember the name of it now i think it's showing i think it's on lobo's osi 74 channel on roku mm -hmm. and it was really weird this guy dustin dustin oh i can't remember his last name starts with a p and i can't remember the wrestling show's name but um oh, what the hell was it well i mean to make a long story short when I was going to have it on, Brassfield was like, oh, I don't like those guys. They're, they're, it's not like real wrestling. It's almost like they're doing, God, I wish I can remember what the name of it was. Well, anyway, um, guy approached me and I put it on the channel for a while and I put it on at noon. I said, that's like when I used to watch wrestling, it was on. And um, one day I wrote him and I asked him for some new shows and I never heard from him again. So I don't know, you know, what it was all about, but he's on Lobo's channel now. So, yeah, whatever. All right. Here, here's, here's Toby here. Let's see if you can. <laughs> but, uh, wait, I need my glass. There we go. Can you put it down a little bit? Okay. LOL. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's cool. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but, it, it was funny is it's finding out that that horror wrestling and and comic books are like the big three. Oh yeah and, and uh i am a a horror movie wrestling fan that reads a lot of comics uh <laughs> just, there are boxes oh, there, yeah. I, there's boxes there I, I wish i still had my comics my god i sold them all off a long time ago and now I watch comic book men and I see a comic book come in there and I know I had it and they're like, Oh yeah, four thousand dollars. I'm like, oh my god. Oh, Same thing god. with the toys, G.I. Joe, Major Matt Mason. I had all that stuff. Oh man. The the one that killed me was when I was a kid, I had the big Shogun Warriors, the big giant Japanese robots. And I've been slowly buying them back. And then I found oh, an I found an ad for them from when they first came out when they were eleven dollars and eighty eight cents. Oh yeah, geez. I mean I have the Godzilla one here somewhere. I had a couple of those, you know, with the fist wouldn't stay yep. on, you know, the fist would shoot, but you could never get it to stay on. Yeah, oh, I know. I mean, gosh, it, I went to some convention and they had a G.I. Joe footlocker and it had some stuff in it. And I was like, it was like five grand. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Yep. I had all this. And back then it was like a dollar ninety nine, you know, to buy this, that, the other thing. Oh, I just heard thunder. Yeah, it's. I think I'm getting it here because it's. Uh, <laughs> it's. It says it tells me on my computer that it is now raining. So, <laughs> <laughs> Which you don't care about because you're inside. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in the so, basement, yeah. so I don't. I don't hear it unless it's really loud. Um, yeah. well, I'm, I was at the gym working out, man. All of a sudden, man, I get up and I look. And it's just white outside the windows. I'm like, well, that's that's raining pretty hard. I guess I'm going <laughs> to stay here for a little longer. <laughs> so, you know, it was the thing with Raul. It, it's funny you were talking about how long we've been on here. When when he interviewed me, I swear we did like two hours. And then when he posted it, it was less than an hour. And yeah. I was like, dude, what'd you do with the rest of it? You, you can make a whole nother show out of that. What What, you know. So I don't even remember what we talked about, you know? Same same thing with here. No, he, same thing. He, he, it was like, I think we were just shy of two hours. And I think when he when he dropped my episode, it was just over an hour. So yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I did, um, I've done episodes that uh, very rarely do I ever edit it. Because um, usually I just let it run, have fun. You, like I, I've told people, it's like, my brain doesn't work linear. So to get from point A to point B, you have to see the whole entire conversation or you're not going to know what happened. 
Oh, I do that all the time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm going to trim out like the dog and the kid and stuff like that. And, and I'll shorten it up a little bit, but I mean, we're, we're two hours and 15 minutes. So it might be just shy of two hours. You're going to knock 20 minutes off of it. Maybe at most, Yeah. but I'm like, I don't, oh, yeah. I, I don't know how people edit them down. Like, Oh, if we did a, we talked for four hours. Here's an hour of our show. Yeah, Ow. exactly. How do you I'm get like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what I said. I want to go back and know what, what was the rest of it, you know? Oh, man. How else did I say? Well, and, and see, when I first started doing this, came back, I did it as a podcast. And people were listening to, because we used to call it group therapy, dinner and a, dinner and a podcast. And we would legitimately go to the Mexican restaurant. We would put the as my phone down in the middle of the table. And we would have a conversation about movies, video games, toy, you know, whatever was what was going on. And people loved it. And people were like, man, I wanted to talk. And I felt like I couldn't get a word in edgewise. And I'm like, then I realized <laughs> I'm listening to a podcast that I can't interact with. <laughs> I, was like, I know. And to be honest with you, I'm, 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 I'm happy to do these out of costume. You know, I mean, nothing wrong with it, but. I mean, that's the way like Raul did it. And that's what attracted me to it. He was like, well, no, he goes, we're, we're doing Monster Kid origin. So you don't have to be in costume. I mean, I've done a couple of them. And it's just, believe me, like I said, I like the fact that I have a unique look, but man, it's a pain in the ass, you know, to get all that, <laughs> I, I, all that together sometimes. I tell, I tell the, the guest, I'm like, it's all up to you. I was yeah. like, because I, I have guests, I've had guests who, who want to be 100% in character for the episode oh, yeah. they and i'm like okay so i i i did the questions and that that helps a little bit with the questioning because then i can kind of you know take it where, what direction it needs to go in um yeah. but to be honest when it when it's when they're out of character but you know they acknowledge that they are the character that is what works great because then you can con converse about you know how, you know how'd you become the character and how did you you know they, like, like finding out that you had this wrestling background that slowly kind of did this and then this, and then you made, and then some Jack comes out here at the end and you can't get that. If I interview Jack in full right, costume, right. Because you, you, you know, you, you want to keep Jack, Jack, you know, you don't want him to be, you know, the, the ECW referee or the, the, the manager, you know, and then to get to here <laughs> and, I, you know, I don't mind either one. Like I just did Mr. Molto uh, a couple days ago, hundred percent. He's in his costume, but he did it kind of like acknowledging that he was Jonathan. I'm like, do you want me to refer? He's like, I don't care. You know, it's just, so I'm like, all right. So, and he, you know, he go, well, yeah, well, I think you have a lot more to talk about if you do it that way, mm -hmm. you know, or do it this way or, or whatever. Oh, I know. I mean, believe me. And again, I'm not going to name names, but I know people who are just so totally into character and they will not break it for anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at as a wrestler. I know people that do that. That's fine. And they have to do that out in public. But I mean, I mean, look at I'm doing this. I did it with Raul. And, I, and to me, I feel more comfortable like this. I, oh, yeah. I feel like I can talk about this more as myself than than anything else. Yep. Well, because. You know, like I said, you don't have to just stay the course. You know, you yeah. can go, well, this is how, you know, because you're getting the origin of your, you know, Jack. And, you know, without knowing your history, you don't know Jack's yeah. history. And I, I, I like doing it, you know, but like I said, if people want to yeah. stay in character, I just, you know. <laughs> I have I have hosts that come in the chat that stay in character, and more power to you. You know. Yeah. No, I, I I need I need to ask you this: when you do your shows, um, was was it just you? Did you have writers? Did you have people to help work on the show, or was it just always just, um, uh, like you and maybe a couple people? Or I had at any time like three or four guys that were doing it with me. Um, you know, two would run camera, one would, uh, I had a director in the booth and, but then they all played characters too. You know, they all, and we never written, we, we had never written anything down. I mean, I, I used to take notes, 
And I, I knew when I went in there what I wanted to talk about, what direction. It was always improv. It was always off the cuff. I mean, some of the best ideas we had, we walked in to the studio, set up the set, and then suddenly said, oh, it'd be funny if we did this during this episode. I mean, it happened right there. Um, and I've said this before, the worst episode I ever did was one that I wrote from beginning to end that was scripted. It, it was terrible just trying to follow that. Um, like I said, I'd have notes on trivia and stuff like that. That was my big thing was the beginning of the show would be talking trivia. But then I always told the guys I wanted to do skits around the movie that we're doing. And that's what we always used to do. And, and again, I would get up there. I knew you know, what direction I wanted to go in, but it was all whatever came out of my mouth. And that's the way I did it. Yeah, that that's the way I like doing my show. Yeah. I, I I had it's funny because because I, I I got my notes and the, this is legitimately my so I got I got everything written down <laughs> and I just put notes and I'll put like okay you know this is the episode this is the pie you know whatever this is the name of the episode then sometimes I put like more information down sometimes I'll have like I hate to say this I'll have the phone out with the with the information ready to go so I can just kind of eyeball it and be like oh yeah this show came out in 1987 and it ran for 13 episodes and and do stuff like that but I did an episode where I scripted it I had everything and I hated it I it's, ne- it's never yeah, seen light of day. I, did I, too. I trashed it and was like all right starting all over again so I shot the entire thing well, off <laughs> and I'll tell you what here let me show you I do the same thing when it comes to the schedule for the uh monster channel it's all it's written i don't you know i don't do anything on the computer this is the way i do it still pen and pencil old-fashioned yeah that's a sneak peek of next friday (laughs) i would i would say this is a sneak peek of but this is legitimately yesterday's uh show so (laughs) i can't that's, that's not cheating because the only thing I don't have listed is like because the commercials and stuff I put in there. I don't know what I would put in there until I'm like looking at it going, I don't know. It feels like it needs a PSA. That needs a <laughs> that needs a commercial for. Oh cereal. yeah, I mean, I do the same thing because when I'm, I'm you know, sometimes I like to run a, a movie that will fit in a whole either ninety minute or two hour frame. But then sometimes you get movies that are an hour and fifteen minutes. Now when I block out the channel. I always block it out in two hour increments. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's difficult when you have a movie that's an hour and 15 and you're doing it for 90 minutes. It doesn't sound like a lot, but 15 minutes of filler is a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I mean, I I do it. I break the movie up into four pieces and then I'm like, okay, let's pick this commercial, this commercial, a trailer that either came out the same year as that movie or has something to do with that movie or yeah, that's the way I do it all the time. It's very off the cuff. I mean, as much as I have all the shows written down and planned out the filler, that's you, you do that as you do it. You yep. know? Yeah. It's like um, the Saturday, the Saturday morning serial show is, is I, I leave that open for everything. So that's got like, like I said, commercials for, you know, serial toys. Sometimes I'll leave like a little kid's cartoon movie in there, stuff like that. I uh, do the PSAs and whatnot. And I put that all in there. I even found like in the news. So I put those in there, but now like, Oh, my wow. Sci- my sci- those. Yeah. The, the, what was funny because I think the last one I aired was uh, um, about um, uh, the, the uh, um, hostage crisis in like 1978 or something oh like my that. Gosh. The, yeah, the, the the Iranian yeah. hostage crisis. Yeah, because oh they had that God. on Saturday morning on a kids' cartoon. It was on CBS on a Saturday morning, and they were telling kids that this is. I'm like, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, and they did them like they were talking to the kids. It yep. wasn't like they they explained it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Wow, yep. I even posted those in there. And uh, uh, but now like, that was like the bicentennial moments. Remember, I don't know if you know, in 1976 when we were celebrating the bicentennial, they used to do the same thing. They had these little short bits that they would do. Same thing. Wow, TV was fun. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> it's no fun anymore. It was and. Well, and, and it, it was. I'm sorry. I mean, I know I sound old, but I'm, I'm you know, I don't even have cable anymore. I, don't... I do because I, I watch, I watch, uh, I watch, uh, me and my son watch Forged in Fire because it's like one of our favorite shows and it's legitimately a show. Well, I'm they, telling you, you, they make weapons. <laughs> anything I want to watch, I find online, to be honest with you. I mean, I can, I watch wrestling online. I don't even have cable. I mean, and I don't miss it. 
and I don't miss the price either. You know? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> well, what's funny is is that um, we the house that I have now is it's three levels. This is my my basement. This is my lair. Then the middle floor, which is the kitchen, the, you know, the, the, the two bathrooms and my mother-in-law and my brother-in-law live there because my mother-in-law was getting where she couldn't, she's, she has some health issues and stuff. She can't get around real well. So we knew that she was going to have to live with us sooner or later. So we just bought a house now, moved her in. My brother-in-law mm-hmm. has autism too, and he's severely autistic. He's, he'll, he'll never, ever be able to be out on his own ever. Um, nonverbal. But then we have the up, the upstairs, upstairs, and then that has two big rooms and a bathroom, and that's where my bedroom is, and then where Vince's bedroom is, and then where our, our like the, the second living room is, and that, <laughs> and um, with doing this, my but my mother in law is is in the middle floor, but she believes in television, that she so she <laughs> has like every channel. She has all, like a bunch of the streaming channels. I'm like, I only need like, I got streaming channels, but she has them all. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I guess I have them all now. Too. <laughs> well, the only thing that I missed about having cable was watching football, but now I can watch that on Peacock. I mean, they, it's like they have a lot of the games and everything because I'm a Bengals fan, believe it or not. And <laughs> but, I, I saw almost all the games last year. So as I'm telling you, I don't miss cable at all. Well, what what else is nice is that uh, um, I took and uh, um, I went out to my friend's shop and a girl that was working there, she was mad because she was trying to watch the Saints game at the time. The Saints game wasn't on local television. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, have you tried going to um, the, the, the local station's uh, website? She's like, what? I was like, go look up the NBC or the NBC affiliate in... Uh, New Orleans. She's like, okay, and boom, there it was. I was like, there you go. Watch it on your watch it on your computer. And she's like, I well, didn't know you-, you can go to NFL.com. I saw quite a few games on there. Mm-hmm. They were showing a lot of games. Right. Yeah, like I said, I mean, you know, hey, you want cable? That's your business. You know, yep. <laughs> I don't miss it. It's been two years. I mean, it was like a freaking car payment. I was like, and for what? I don't watch. I really don't watch much of any regular TV. Like I said, I watch wrestling. I watch football and you know you 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 can get like for 499 you can uh, get what is it um peacock or whatever those ones and and watch a lot of the new shows that are out right mm-hmm. now i mean my my you know having maybe hbo max and peacock and stuff like that i mean it's still only a quarter of what i was paying for cable and i'm yeah. you know watching the same shows so Cable oh, yeah. is robbery. I'm telling you, it's robbery. Well, I, it's I like remember, legal robbery. <laughs> that's like, I remember when they were like, oh, we're going to offer a la carte so you can just pay for the channels you want. Yeah, but you still my. had to buy them in bundles. And I'm like, I yeah. don't want, okay, so there's 10 episodes of channels. I only want History Channel. But I got to buy these other 10 that I don't want to get the History Channel. All right. Or, well, that's what pissed me off. What they did with Turner Classic Movies—they took it off the basic and then put it on a sports package. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I loved watching Turner Classic Movies at Halloween. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. They have a lot of great stuff on there. But I mean, I'm not going to pay for that. I mean, I chances are I had the movie anyway, so I'll just watch. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 my wife hates it because I have I have thousands upon thousands of DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff. Well. That's like I said, that's I did that interview with Raul, my top 20, which I, I call him a sadistic bastard for making me pick. I have 7,200 horror, D, horror sci fi fantasy DVDs, and trying to whittle that down to 20, I'm like, damn, man, you're killing me. <laughs> I, as I, I tell people, I was like, well, they're like, what's your favorite movie of all time? I was like, my favorite movie of all time is Empire Strikes Back. I love Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. It's my favorite. But that doesn't count because it's a Star Wars movie. They're like, what? I was like, that's just part of my life. That's just part of who I am as a person. I was like, yeah. my other, you know, I was like, I love the, you know, original Halloween, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Night of the Living Dead, um, mm-hmm. 
stuff like that. And, you know, everybody always tries to like, well, what's, what's your top 10 movie? I'm like, what top 10 movie? Is it my top 10 <laughs> slasher films? Is it my, sla- my top 10 supernatural films? Or is this my top 10 horror films? You guys, <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, it was tough. It was oh, tough yeah. to I, pick. I don't think I could do it. Yeah. I, could... I did. <laughs> I, I think about you know what I told them to really screw with people. I said, what you should do is make them pick their bottom 20 dvds the, the like the you know why did i buy this why do i own this you know <laughs> that'd be uh, interesting um alien covenant i can put that in there because that's a movie i own just so i can have all the alien movies and i do not like that alien movie <laughs> oh, there you go but I, I i remember me and my son and one of my best friends were sitting in the theater watching alien covenant and we're watching it, watching it, watching it. And I'm just like, and I just keep getting this like weird feeling. Also, I look at Joe at ends and I'm like, I don't think that was a good movie. And he's like, <laughs> I was like, really? I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think that was a good movie at all. And uh, I had such high hopes for it because I'm a, as, as me and my son say, I'm a Prometheus apologist. I like the movie Prometheus. Um mm-hmm. And then Alien Covenant come out. I thought, oh, we're going to get the extension of that movie. And then we didn't. And it was like. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And no, I'm, uh, I, I, it's hard for me to say. I don't know. It, it, we were talking about Blair Witch. I mean, I was. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's one of my least favorite movies, but I the hype about that didn't live up. The, the marketing was amazing. And, you know, that whole website and that sci-fi special they did and everything, I thought that was great. But ooh, I sat in the theater and I'm watching this and I'm like, huh? <laughs> this is scary. For, for me, Blair Witch Project, I still appreciate it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's oh, it's innovative. Yeah. yeah. It's not something you can go back and rewatch. But I remember going to the theater for the midnight showing on a Wednesday night. This is the legitimately the first showing anywhere locally. This is Wednesday night, midnight. Uh, me, my wife, and my mother-in-law, because my mother-in-law wanted to see it. So I took her with us. We went and seen it. And I'm sitting there watching it. You know, you go through the whole thing. And then it has the end. And I've never seen a theater just dead quiet. People weren't getting mm. up. People were just like, what, what just happened? Was that real? And then I went into the, I'm, I'm, I'm in the restroom outside the, the thing. And these guys are standing next to me. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe those people let their kids get killed on film. And I'm just sort of going, these people got it. <laughs> you know, I was like, this movie worked. And, and like I said, yeah. it was. Oh no, I, yeah. Yeah. But I think it was one of the ones you get to see it once in the right theater with the right group of people. And I got to see it at like the apex because if I would have seen it in a dead theater where people just do like, yeah, hey, whatever, it, I don't think it would have worked, but it was with all the people who thought it was real in that theater yeah. made it work. <laughs> so, well, I, and I said this in uh, a, a recent interview when I saw that sci-fi special they did the night before, I thought it was real. Mm-hmm. I mean, it fooled me. Of course, that night I went to the website and then I realized, oh, wait a minute, this is all marketing. But I remember when they were showing that sci-fi special, I turned around and my family said, when the hell did this happen? And how did I never hear about this? And I was like, holy crap, this is like, you know, proof of supernatural shit going on. You know, how did I not know? And then, I mean, to be honest with you, I was disappointed that it wasn't real. And I know that sounds mean, like you really wanted somebody to be yeah. dead. But it took me back to being a kid when it was like, you know, you kind of got excited about something that it was like, damn, is this proof of, you know, a uh, ghost or what? And, and then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, man, I like the sci-fi special better because of it, it made me feel. And again, you're right. I, I, I don't knock it it was very innovative for its time and everything but just didn't scare me in the least you know i don't know well my whole thing is is that right now like and people give me crap for this is i don't think the movie hereditary was scary at all 
Thank you. And okay, thank you. <laughs> legitimately, the big reveal at the end, people laughed out loud in the theater where we were in. Yeah. And I have friends who are like, oh my God, it's one of the best movies. You got to go back and rewatch it. Maybe we're just with the right I have group. friends too. Yep. And I'm I tried, and I was like, it's an intense family drama that they tried to make supernatural at the very end. And I'm like, and, and I'm sitting there going, how is this kid not in jail? He was high and got his <laughs> sister's head taken off. This kid should be in jail right now. They should be doing a whole movie about the family falling apart with their son in jail because he murdered their daughter. <laughs> well, and I had friends who were raving about that movie and mm -hmm. I watched it and you know what they said to me? Well, you must not have been paying attention then. You must not have gotten everything that was in the movie. And I said, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. I, and I mean, I, I, I can watch it. I've watched it a couple times. I think I can appreciate it a little more now. But it's like you said, and, and I hate this moniker. They did it with Paranormal Activity. They did it with The Blair Witch. I hate any movie that says the scariest movie in the past yeah. 10 years. I absolutely hate when they do that. You know? Yep. Sorry, here comes the train. <laughs> I always say it's a hard express coming by. Mm. Um, I just hate when somebody says that. You know, it's like I said, I saw paranormal activity in the movies, and I'm like, this is scary. I, I have scarier stuff happening in my house than this film. You know, while, wow, you know, again, I, I give credit to anybody who can make a movie and look at it and make a, it made a ton of money. So they did something right. Yeah. No. Well, the worst part about it with paranormal activity, I like the original ending better. That because I got I, I got a bootleg of it, and uh, it yeah. had the uh, yeah. the the one where uh, she kills herself at the end, and yeah. she slams into the camera, and she's got this weird grin, and she like just cuts her, and I'm like, I thought that was scarier than the one that just leaves it ambiguous. And then, of course, then we get the the like yep. ten more. Yeah, the end of the end of this one was her just staring into the camera because wasn't there also? I think I had an alternative one where the cops kill her. Yeah, the the, the cops the come in and shoot her. Yeah, shooter. yep. Yeah. There's three different yeah. endings. Yep. Yeah, I kind of like that one better too, to be honest yeah. with you. But I I don't know. I mean, I, I I just I find it like really absurd that it was like all right, night two, the bathroom light went on. And then it went off. Wow. You know, I mean, <laughs> like I said, I had scarier stuff happen in my house than that. You know, so, and I don't believe in ghosts. Believe it or not, I don't. But um, I don't know. I, Sinister was a good, that's, that was like the first movie that has given me a creeps in a while. That I was watching it like at two in the morning and I actually turned the light on in the middle of watching the movie. and. That that's the first one in a while. That's why I'm looking forward to seeing the black phone because I, I'm I'm hoping it's as good as this. And um, I guess I'll find out. I'm going to watch it later. But um, yeah. I don't know. You become jaded, I guess. There's not much in the way of horror that that. Uh, and then there's a lot of good horror out there. Oh um, yeah, new. But I don't know. I haven't watched anything that's really grabbed me. And even Sinister's, you know, been around for a while now. But yeah, uh, ten years somewhere in the ballpark. I don't know. Yeah, well, me and my wife had that discussion a while back because, you know, especially it was like right after Hereditary came out. I was like, are we jaded? Are, are, yeah. have, we, have we have we watched so much that it doesn't affect us anymore? And I went, no, because there's other horror movies that I've watched that are just, you know, freaky or, or creepy. Yeah, you get the ones that, that are, um, you know, the ones that make you kind of feel dirty, like you're like you're 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 torture porn and stuff like that which i'm not mm -hmm. a fan of um not me neither but me neither. uh you know there's the supernatural ones that 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 really kind of still like put that little tingle in the back of your neck and you know there there's ones um and, and i watch shutter all the time because it's you know it's there's pretty much everything you could kind of want to watch on there yeah and Sometimes I'll try out a new movie and I'm like, yeah, that one didn't work. And the next one's like, that one's really pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think one of the movies that I really liked that a lot of people didn't like just because it was it's kind of weird and it's a weird take, I guess, on zombies was Pontypool, 
which is the oh, yeah. the DJs. He's just in that booth, and its entire movie is filmed in what a twenty by twenty square. Yeah, and, and that, that I, I like that movie too. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, that's intense, and and I'm like. That's one of the ones that you you're, you're like you can feel like the the intensity because yeah. everything is just outside you know I'm I'm going to do this with my with my my thing okay everything that exists was exists within this square then all the horrors of the universe are on this outside periphery and they all want to kill you yeah and that's what that is is like you got that little intense area box with all those monsters trying to get in and. I like that one. Um, well, and to be honest with you, one one I just thought of that that again I wasn't expecting too much. Annabelle Creation. I think out of all those Annabelle movies, I that one to me I liked that one a lot. Yeah, I thought that was really creepy. You know, for and again, you're right. I it's I guess it's like the older I get, um, it's like you really have to stop and think: Do I want to waste two hours of my life watching this? You know, right now, when you're a kid, you don't give a crap. Yep. You know, when you're a kid, it's like, oh, you got all the time in the world. I don't know. I kind of feel now, eh, do I want to do I want to give this movie? And, and it's a shame because you have to at least watch them because you will find, like I said, those hidden gems. Yep. I didn't expect much out of Trick or Treat. And I love that movie. Uh, Sinister, I was like, oh, whatever. I mean, there was a, lot, a ton of supernatural movies out at that time. Um, and Sinister was... Uh, <laughs> Oh wow! That's the trick or treat oh. vinyl with the. I, I love that movie. And they, oh, they, that uh, movie is so good. Yeah. yeah, that movie's great. And it's weird because, like I said, I mean, and I, I, I love the anthologies. And the problem is, there's like so many of them out now, and I don't know. There's not many good ones. Tales of Halloween, I like. Have you seen that was scare a good packages? One. Um, did I? Yeah, I think I did. That's a fun one. Yeah. Yeah, that one was pretty good. But there's so many of them now. It's oh, yeah. just like everything else. You know, something good comes along, and then, you know, when Walking Dead started, how many zombie movies did you get? You know, at that, at the, and not very good ones either. No. It, but, it's, well, when um, you had all the, because it all, it kind of goes in waves. Like we had that one big craze where everything was a vamp, vampire. Vampires. Yeah. And it was the craze where everything was zombies. Then there was the craze where everything was the um, torture porn, the, the hostile, the, 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 you know, all that stuff. And then you yeah. had the, the, the uh, where everything was supernatural. So you had your, your essentially your knockoff of your, your uh, um, the, the Warren universe stuff that they did. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's all like chunks, chunks, chunks. I mean, I was a manager at a video store for years, so I, I knew I went through all that stuff. And um, I watched the worst of the worst movies all the way up to the best of the best <laughs> movies. Because everybody would ask me, well, what's good? Well, it was part of my job, so I watch movies all the time. And I'm like, don't rent that one. Rent that one. You won't want that <laughs> one because, like you said, it has subtitles. Uh, <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah. You're not going to like it because you got to read it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know though, but it, but sometimes that's tough too because it's a matter of taste. Oh yeah, well, because it, it's the ones. You, my you, favorite you... holiday movie. I mean, I like the Christmas Story, but Chevy Chase's Christmas Vacation. I, I love that movie, and I remember the first time I saw it. Um, a bunch of the guys I worked with at the time, I went in and I said, hey, "Guys, you got to rent this movie and see this movie. It is hilarious." They came back in on Monday and they're like, "You thought that was funny." <laughs> I like what? You did you didn't think it was funny? I mean, you know. I did the same thing with the movie Office Space. I didn't much care for Office Space when I the first time I watched it. And then like like a few months later, I actually had a boss come up to me and go, Yeah, if you could just work this Saturday, that would be great. And I went, oh, it's like the movie. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh. Well, Man, I'm gonna have to let you go because I've got to run yep. to the grocery store. <laughs> yep. I realize that the dogs need food and the cats need food. Um, oh my gosh, man! I spend more money on that than I do food for myself. Are you kidding me? Jeez. <laughs> oh man, 
Well, it was great I, talking to you. Yeah, great yeah. talking to you. And and anytime, man, we'll we'll get together and do something. And and hopefully, um, I'm gonna try to get down there for the 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 match between Hack and Slash. Fingers crossed, I'll be able to make it down there. Um, but hopefully, I'm gonna try to get down to at least to one day at horror at horror, at, at um, uh, horror hound. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to a, I already had concert tickets for that Sunday. So and it's I hate to say this. It's to a band that never comes to America. So I'm going to jump on that. Oh, no. uh, who is it? Uh, it's a band called Perturbator. They're uh, um, synth wave. They mm-hmm. um, uh, let's see. Uh, all right. There we go. It's uh, they do. uh oh, wow. Yeah, Dangerous Days was their like, but they're 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 from overseas, and they never do the United States, and they're doing Detroit. So, oh wow! Ah, I was like, I don't dude, you buy vinyl? Huh? (laughs) Yeah, buy buy vinyl. vinyl? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I just got uh, 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 so many vinyl records that I wish I still had. Jeez. Well, I I got some of my old stuff. Like we were just joking around about uh. My son finding Metallica again. Like I've got my old. Oh wow! I have Damn. Master nice. Puppets on vinyl. I've got Black Sabbath and anything from Def Leppard, Black Sabbath, uh, Led Zeppelin. Uh, oh, Zeppelin! Nice. Zeppelin's one of my favorite bands of all time. Right, mine too. And I don't. I the funny part about it, there for the longest time, I had it on um, vinyl and cassette. I didn't have it on anything other than vinyl. <laughs> I, I think I even had Led Zeppelin four on eight track at one point. Oh, I uh, probably did too. I had a ton of stuff. I mean, same time. I mean, I'm a big Bowie fan, big Bowie fan. Well, and um, I had a lot of, uh, my gosh, my collection and stupid. See, I don't want to keep going on, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> see, I did the same thing with DVDs. I had a ton of VHS. And, and when I started getting DVDs, I was like, all right, I'm going to get rid of the VHS. And unfortunately, the DVDs had different titles on them mm-hmm. because they went like with uh, the perfect example is um, Eyes Without a Face. Mm-hmm. And that was out. It was called The Horror Chamber of Dr. Faustus. And I had that mm-hmm. on VHS under that title. And I got the DVD thinking, well, that's going to be the title on the DVD. No, no. Nope. And I got rid- and I was pissed. And I did that with a lot of my stuff. And I'm regretting it. Turn it down. I don't, I don't want your dogs to starve. Yep. All right. Get, so, how long? How long we've been on? I'm just shy of three hours. Oh my gosh! Wow, man. This, this is going to be a two-parter. This is going to be a two-part. Well, I mean, and, and to be honest with you, hey, look, that's how you know it's fun when you don't realize how long it's been. So, oh man, you know, and, and this has been a blast. It. I can't oh, wait I, I, to talk again and to talk in person next time. And um, you know. If you want to try about getting my stuff on your on the Monster Channel, I would be totally oh, yeah. 100% cool with it. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much of it I can get on there, but it's... <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, the cartoon show, that'd be great. I mean, I do a cartoon show every Saturday morning at noon anyway. So, I mean, I could either switch it out or have it on afterwards or, you know, I'd yeah. love me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell with that. Like I said, I have ways of getting around things, so... Cool. You know, if it gets blocked on YouTube, I have, you know, we have a lot of our stuff for Roku stored somewhere else that it will not get blocked. So just Sweet. keep that a secret. Hey, don't don't, hey. don't put that in the interview. But if- <laughs> I, I, I've got 65 episodes, so that will take a long wow. time before you burn through it. Yeah. I put out an episode every week for the last year. And well, year I mean, and- dude, if you're good with it, I'll, yeah. I'll put it on. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. Some of them early episodes are only like an hour, hour or like an hour and a half. Nah, mm-hmm. this last one is uh, probably just shy of four hours. So, wow, wow, <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, if you're good with it, let yeah, me let look fun. at him. And yeah, I guess I just had some guy from a puppet show get in touch with me too. Um, I can't remember what the name of it is offhand, but uh, he's got like a hundred and some odd episodes too. And I'm like, geez, I should just start like a Saturday morning, you know. Yeah, like yeah, have you your cartoon it. show on my cartoon show on have bobby the bat he does a thing called saturday morning scares and then this puppet show jesus i can make it be like it was back in the old days i could start it like at eight o'clock in the morning and let it run till noon i i did you know 
before I go, I did one episode on our one year anniversary. So it's our 52nd episode. I did Saturday all day. So I started out at seven in the morning with the old like 60s cartoon. So I did Sinbad, this Sinbad Jr. and like Deputy Dog ran a normal like Saturday morning block. Then I did big time wrestling from Detroit. Then I did a, a Kung Fu movie. Oh, wow. So it was eight hours. It was a total wow. of eight hours like it would have been when, when wow. I, in the 1980s. Cool. Yeah. And the worst part about it is I found well, out. We that- do Kung Fu too on Saturday afternoons. We do a Kung Fu theater because I grew up watching that too. Well, before you go, that. like I said, now you, you've, you've just inspired me. Because usually what is on the channel from midnight to noon is repeating what was on the day before. Mm -hmm. Maybe on Saturday mornings, I could start doing original programming and do a block of your show, my cartoon show, this puppet show, Bobby's show. Here you go. You just gave me an idea. Have at it, sir. More work, but hey, what the hell? Yep. (laughs) All right, man. All right, man. You have a good day. It, and uh, it was great. You have yeah, a great have, night. Have fun. And uh, this has been a blast. And I can't wait to talk to you again. Yes, it was. And um, like I said, we got to, we got to like go do something sometime when we're near, go get dinner or something. So, <laughs> uh oh. Now, see, I just, I just got a, a weather thing on my phone. Yeah. Lightning. Okay. No, I'm there just still saying raining right, now. So. <laughs> All right, man. Well, well you take you care, so sir. It's oh. great. You have a great night. You too. And you too, Vince. Yep. Say bye. Have a great night, Vince. No. <laughs> He's like, I'm watching TV, Dad. So, all right. <laughs> all right, man. Take care. Later. Good talking to you. Good talking Later, to you. Man. Bye. Big thank you to Halloween Jack for hanging out with us today on this extravaganza show. Uh, as always, Group Therapy TV is brought to you by Are You Game, the best comic book collectible, uh, video game, toy, magic shop located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And remember, every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for Group Therapy TV with all the coolest interviews. Every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Sci Fridays. And every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Saturday Morning Serials. As always, I am your host, Paul, and I will see you next time. Take care, and I will see you all later. Bye.